for the Salina Liberty. So the Liberty come in looking to keep pace with that upper echelon of the Sioux City Bandits, Omaha Beef, and also the Gillette Mustangs coming in to tonight. Other games, Topeka is playing Southwest Kansas Storm. Sioux City is playing Rapid City, and then the two unbeatens going out of Gillette playing Omaha tonight. We'll keep you up to date on those. Billings won the coin toss. They will defer. That means they will kick off to the Salina Liberty to start this game. And interesting to see who will take care of not only kickoff duties, but possible extra point duties, as they do not have somebody designated as a kicker on their game day roster. Yeah, and that, that's huge. You know, you come down, especially for Salina, you look at the game against Topeka on the road, and then at Sioux City, both games going to overtime, both games coming down to kicks that would have loomed big. And now if you're Billings and you have no kicker on the roster, we've seen them have a couple different guys kick off throughout the year, but... You know, kickoff's a lot less important, I would say, than that extra point. Yeah, I mean, you don't, placement and everything, we always talk about kind of the technicalities, and we don't want to take anything away from a kicker, but typically your kicker's not going to be one of your better tacklers. You get to put a skill guy out there maybe to kick the ball, then have an extra tackler and maybe somebody that can help out with coverage. So it could be a, a strength that you could turn over into that. So Salina will put Tracy Brooks back to start, as you heard Coach O say. Tracy has family in town, and the first time that they have seen Tracy Brooks play here in Salina. So I'm sure it's a big night for Tracy Brooks. He wants to perform well in front of family. Also back with him will be Kevin Simmons, already a touchdown return off of a kick this season. Had that against Topeka. Should be a good one. Glad you're with us here on KINA and also watching on YouTube. Billings wearing their white tops, black pants, black helmet with a white outlaw logo on the side. Of course, the line of Liberty decked out in their stars and stripes, their red, white, and blue. Fun jerseys, it's not <laughs> broadcaster friendly sometimes. So we got Brian down on the field. That's right. See who's. course. <laughs> the guy that does everything for Den Billings. Denarius Antoine, he is one of the leading tacklers in the league. Also came in for a game here last year and played running back for the majority of the contest. Yeah. He will kick off to start this game. We should have known, right? Yeah. He has a watermelon style on the kicking tee and oh. he is going to shank this one out of bounds. Salina Liberty will have very good field position to start this game. They will start out of midfield at the 25 yard line. Quarterback for the Salina Liberty to lead this offense out on the field is Javante Johnson, the six foot one, 205 pound quarterback. Played a little bit in Rapid City. He has played sparingly here and there in games this season. The only game I believe that he's not played in this season was the game in Topeka. Javante Johnson is the guy tonight for head coach Haran O'Neill. Of course, with him will be Tracy Brooks, also one of the best wide receivers in the league, and Demarius Washington. We'll see Mo Strong along with Anthony Love and Fast Ed Smith. Up front will be Kelvin McCoy at center, along with Joel Galvin and Alecki Tapa. That offensive line could be key tonight, Russ, against this very, very good defensive front for the Outlaws. Two guys on the right-hand side in motion. First pass going to the end zone from Johnson, and it's over the shoulder and off the fingertips of Demarius Washington looking over his right shoulder and just ran out of room at the back of the wall. Yeah, and the wall kind of snuck up on him. He pulled up a little bit. We saw that last week in Rapid City where receiver went clear almost through the wall and propelled over it. But this Billings team gives up a lot of yards in the Salina offense, ranked number one in total offense in the CIF at 278.2 yards per game. Liberty will load up the right-hand side this time, the two inside receivers in motion. Pitch out Tracy Brooks, back to the line of scrimmage, and ran right into the back of Ed Smith. Ed was getting blocked at that time by the linebacker for Billings, and a nice play there from Victor Martinelli. Martinelli pushed Ed Smith back, and he was able to knock Tracy Brooks down in a package deal. Two plays for Salina, no yards yet, still third down and 10 as we are underway here at Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. This time, Salina will load up the left-hand side. Liberty going heavy to the left. Tracy Brooks standing to the right of Javante Johnson. 
Double J back to pass, looking to the left, steps up in the pocket, and he's going to airmail one over to the wall. And a rough start for the Liberty here in their first three plays with no yards, now facing a fourth down and 10. Yeah, and coming in 10 for 23, 43 and a half percent on third down. Now you're going to fourth down, Salina number one, Six for nine on fourth downs in the league, but average yards to go, you're not in a favorable position right here. Ron O'Neill's going to leave the offense out there to try to pick up this fourth down and 10 from midfield at the 25-yard line. Of course, he does have a weapon in Jimmy Kozowski if he elects to use him, this time leaving the offense on the field. Empty backfield, two wide receivers to each side. The two guys on the left are in motion. Johnson back to pass, under pressure, has to step up, and again overthrows a receiver. And Brian Berger, this is a rough, rough start for the Salina Liberty offense as they go four and out. Yeah, not the start that Coach O'Neill would have wanted. A lot of those passes, you know, they're in the area, but just high on each of the three that were incomplete. And I think you look through a situation question would be you know how many reps is, is he had with the top receivers throughout the you know the season I know he's come in but the timing just wasn't there on that series I'm sure they'll come in they'll regroup they'll be ready for the next position now it's the defense's turn to step up and see if they can shut this Billings offense down defense being called on here for the Salina Liberty up front Travis Taylor on the right hand side Keenan Gibbs in action as he is active for the Salina Liberty tonight. In the middle, the big guy, Zach Hill. Here's a pass out, left-hand side, an immediate hit by the Liberty will hold this passing play to just a one-yard gain. First to arrive on the play for the Salina Liberty is C.J. Jones. And Billings coming in, averaging 87 yards a game on the ground. That is third in the CIF. Obviously, Salina leading in that category with Tracy Brooks. Surprised to come out with a pass on the first play. 75.8 yards a game passing is last in the league here. So no running backs in the backfield once again here for Billings. A familiar quarterback name and face to Salina fans, Vincent Espinoza, who played a couple of games with Salina last year. They're going to try to run it right. Keenan Gibbs there to stop the play as the helmet comes off of a Billings linebacker, or excuse me, running back. The official is going to throw the flag, but I think this was incidental contact. The tackle is being made. We'll see what they dice it out here on the field. Ron O'Neill with his hands behind his back, very interested in this call. He is not happy. His palm's already up at the sky. And, Brian, they're going to call a face mask on this plate. I don't think that was the case. Yeah, I did not see the face mask. It looked like the tackle came kind of around the shoulder area. And he, as the back was going down, that's when the helmet kind of popped up. No, uh, no real fight, though, from Coach O'Neill. Still very early in the game. Looks like an unfortunate call or maybe a beneficial call here for the Outlaws. They have moved it now all the way to the Salina 12-yard line. Still early on here as we are just underway. This is the opening possession for Billings after Salina went four and out. Two receivers on the right-hand side. They're going to turn and hand it off again. An immediate play by the Salina defense. Travis Taylor, who had a wonderful game last week in Rapid City, there to make the arrest for a short loss. Yeah, we saw Travis bounce around a lot last week, playing in, nose tackle. This week, obviously, with Keenan Gibbs back, and it looks like there's a late penalty flag coming here. That was an awful late flag there. Is they're going to say something about Travis Taylor Bryan? Yeah, the, the situation, why it was a late flag on that previous play, the referee failed to pick up his flag. So he was reaching, trying to get a flag tossed, but there wasn't one in his pocket to throw. So he had to go over to side judge, get his flag and toss it up. But uh, five yard penalty against Billings. That'll make it first and 15. Billings retreating here a little bit back to the 17 yard line. They will go heavy, loaded up on the left-hand side. Three wide receivers, Espinosa pump fakes that way. Now he wants to go deep, has a receiver and wide open in the end zone for Billings is Josh Best. Best all the way to the end zone and all Espinosa had to do there was just be patient, take it his time and lay that one up for Best to run underneath. Yeah, great play call right there. It allowed the play to develop. Espinosa was able to step up and it looked like Dontre Matthews kind of got sucked up and Best just kind of snuck in right behind him. And like you said, Espinosa just had to lay that one up right in his lap. And it looks like Billings, as we said, no kicker on the roster, gonna go for two here. 
Espinoza with a touchdown. 17 yards. Billings ready now to go for two. Placement comes from the two yard line as they try to go for this conversion after touchdown. Espinoza directing traffic, trying to get his receivers on the right hand side in alignment. He has a running back, Joel Shaw, with him. Pass to the right is incomplete, and the Liberty defense keeps the point after conversion off the board and a six to nothing start here at the Tony's Pizza Event Center. And a great start if you're Billings. You know, you come in last in the league in, in passing the football, you know, through four games. So, and we've seen this line of Liberty secondary. It's been a struggle. It hasn't, you can't hide it. When everybody is passing deep down the field, we saw it, you know, late, maybe in the, late in the second quarter, third. Over 30 years, Ryan Roofing has been the area's leader in commercial roofing installation. Over 10 million square feet of Duralast roofing. Now Ryan Roofing is expanding their expertise to the residential properties to better serve you and your home. Shingles, windows, siding, and gutters. Call Ryan Roofing in Salina today for a free roof assessment and get the expert advice you need. Ryan Roofing, serving commercial businesses in the area for over 30 years and now working for you on your residential property. Spring cleaning time, a wonderful time of the year. Winter is over and hope springs eternal. You have the windows open, the birds are singing and you can't help but notice that smell, that awful smell. What is that? That is your septic system backing up into your home, making spring flowers smell, well, like a friendly reminder from Salina Septic Service. If you haven't had your septic system pumped out and cleaned in the last three years, you are asking for trouble. Salina Septic Service. You better call today. This is Salina Liberty Football with Eagle Communications. Kind of fell apart on the formation that time. And a tackle will be made at the 17-yard line. Good coverage there by the Billings Outlaws and just... A Really a return that wasn't well blocked there by Salina. They will start out here, though. Decent field position at the 18-yard line. Yeah, and see if Salina can going to have to string something together, you know, quick now. you got to get this offense going. We, we saw him last week up in Rapid City, Devin, where, you know, with, with Evans at quarterback, it just seemed to click, you know, right away as they scored on their first four possessions of the game. So... See if Javante Johnson can get settled down here and find a wide receiver. First and 10, Liberty. Handing it off to Tracy Brooks. Tracy running out to the left-hand side. Gets a couple of yards and then a beautiful form tackle there by Billings secondary. Dequan Lewis in there to make the tackle. Speared him right at the waist. Yeah, that picture perfect tackle if you're coming in. Somebody had him high and Lewis just came in and with a, with a great form tackle to keep Tracy Brooks, you know, to a two-yard gate, but... You know, we're five plays in now and got two yards. Second down and eight from the 20. Kelvin McCoy reaching down. The southpaw center will be hit early, and this should be a five-yard penalty against the Outlaws. So I did not see much movement across the Salina formation. And, and it looked like it was Jeff Luke right there. And you heard Coach Ron O'Neill in the pregame say he hasn't played all year, but he knew he was somehow was going to show up to play Salina. Jeff Luke now having a conversation with Heron O'Neill and Coach O with a big smile on his face gave him the yeah boy <laughs> point there. So a good five yards there for the Liberty on the penalty. Second down and three. Ball at midfield. Play action. Johnson steps back to pass and a pass behind the intended receiver Anthony Love and a penalty flag down. Also down is one of the linemen for the Salina Liberty, and it looks like Joel Galvin, the six foot seven, 320 pounder from Murray State, as he pounds the turf with his right hand. Tracy Brooks comes over to check on him to make sure the big guy's okay, but he is still not up off the turf here as we have a holding penalty against Salina. Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine is a leader in comprehensive orthopedic services for North Central Kansas. From emergency and non-emergency surgical services to physical therapy and sports medicine, our team has the extensive training and experience you need for diagnosis, treatment, and follow-up care of any orthopedic-related condition. Salina Regional Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. Everything you need 
to keep moving forward. There's no better feeling than leaving the stadium with a win, unless you're leaving the car lot with a great deal. That's how it feels to buy a vehicle from SalinaUsedCars.com. Dozens of late model vehicles have been fully inspected and are backed by warranty. We accept cash or have financing for all credit levels. Whether you need a car, truck, SUV, crossover, or van, SalinaUsedCars.com has them all. Get the winning feeling of a great deal at one of our two locations or shop 24-7 at SalinaUsedCars.com. The CIF champions play here. Liberty Football with Eagle Communications. Well, save you lots of money. Warmer weather is here at Abilene Car Sales. Lots of sunshine means it's time to spring into the fun. Abilene Car Sales is ready to help you find that perfect vehicle for summer fun. Add a reliable truck to pull that camper or boat. Perhaps upgrade your current ride to something a little more fuel friendly. Stop by and save on Northwest 3rd or see our inventory at AbileneCarsales.com. When pests have become too much... It's time to call Hassman Termite and Pest Control. With staff having over 150 years of combined experience, we offer all services for structural pests. Termites, ants, roaches, spiders, crickets, mice, and bed bugs. In our 60th year of our family serving yours, give us a call or visit us on the web at HassmanTermite.com or see us on Facebook. The Tony's Pizza Event Center is open for business and ready to welcome you. Whether you have a group of 12 or 1,200, our staff can help you plan the perfect event. With eight meeting rooms and over 18,000 square feet, the Great Plains Manufacturing Convention Hall has plenty of room for your conference, trade show, wedding, or banquet, while our in-house food and beverage team can craft the menu to suit any event. Schedule your personalized tour today by calling Tony's Pizza Event Center or visit Tony'sPizzaEventCenter.com. The CIF champions play here. Liberty Football with Eagle Communications. And again, that ball really not on target to anybody. It went over the head of Demarius Washington and fell short of a fast Ed in the vacancy on the field. Yeah, and Demarius Washington was absolutely wide open right there. That ball just sailed on Javante Johnson about in the first in the row of the VIP, VIP party pit down there. So you got to get settled down. You just need that first, you know, that first pass to be complete, but... You need it to be soon. 8.05 left to go, first quarter, six to nothing. Billings, it is a third down and 12 for the Liberty. Here's a pass, wide open at the 20 yard line for a first down. And finally, something positive happens for the Liberty, but then getting up and limping off the field is Fast Ed Smith. Yeah, it looked like he kind of pulled up right there at the end of that route. You know, he caught it, took off, and took one step, and then kind of just gave himself up. It looks like Mo Strong now going to come into the game. We saw him have a great game last week in Rapid City. I remember Anthony Love was not active last week, so Mo Strong came on, had a couple of touchdowns, and really made some great catches in the end zone, high-pointing the ball. He will be lined up now wide to the right. First down for the Liberty at the Billings 20-yard line. Pitch out, Tracy Brooks. He goes to the left, and he is going to lose a yard. Nice, nice defense there for Billings, stringing Tracy Brooks out to the wall where he eventually ran out of room. Yeah, and Daenerys Antoine came over there and made another great open field tackle and yet another solo open field tackle for loss. Second down and 11. Lost the yard there, so line of scrimmage now back at the 21-yard line. 6.49 left to play, opening period. Three wide receivers, right-hand side. Screen play out to Mo Strong, has it, tries to hurdle a defender, and he will be brought down at the 15-yard line after a gain of six. That'll bring up third down and five. Well, you heard the crowd gasp there as Mo Strong went airborne. Yeah, it's kind of down in front of us, and he did got up in the air, and he didn't go nowhere. Guy did a great job of coming up and making the tackle and holding him to a short gain. So now brings up third and five once again for Salina. Ball setting at the 15-yard line. Let's see what kind of formation Ron O'Neill comes out with here. He will have Tracy Brooks on the left hip of Javante Johnson. Three wide receivers to the left-hand side. Pitch out Brooks, trying it again and again. That Billings defense is sound and there for the occasion. No gain on the play by Tracy Brooks. Boy, Tracy having a rough road over there on that left-hand side. Salina has tried it now a couple of times. But the league leader in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns being held quiet so far here in this first quarter. And Billings, 
they're only allowing 41 and a half rushing yards a game. So wow. that front defensive, and that's not even the that's not even the best. Salinas at first with 39.2, Gillette with 40, and Billings at 41. So really all three of them right there. So this defense is legit. Fourth down and five. Ron O'Neill leaves the offense on the field again. I think Liberty had a receiver way past the line of scrimmage. So this is probably going to be an offsetting play. There are flags all over the field <laughs> as it looks like Demarius Washington knows that, or Anthony Love knows that he's going to have pass interference, but there was a lot of things that happened even before that play, Brian. There's a, a lot of laundry. Yeah, I didn't see at the line. Definitely we have pass interference down in the end zone, but I'm not sure what the flag. You guys had a better perspective on what that uh, could possibly be. I think, Brian, you're going to have the defensive end over here for Billings came out of his stance at the snap. I don't know what that might be the so line of scrimmage at the 15. I don't know what the two flags are sitting at midfield. There's three fouls all on the probably, defense. Probably going to be, okay, you're going to have offside illegal defense and pass interference probably, which they'll end up taking the, that'll be declined. They'll take the pass interference. So a lot, lot going on there to unpack. Somebody just filled up their bingo card with defensive <laughs> penalties there. Yeah, you you obviously take the, the pass interference in the end zone because that ball will be placed at the two-yard line first down. Then you had illegal defense and also roughing the passer. And we saw a couple plays on that first drive where Javante was scrambling. He got hit, you know, right as he was releasing the ball and it getting closer and closer to that roughing the passer. Well, I mean, you can't be outlaws unless you get three penalties on one play and do outlaw stuff, right? That's so, right. That is, uh, that's what Billings was able to accomplish there, the hat trick and defensive penalties on one single play. Liberty now will go about 15 yards from their huddle to the ball at the two-yard line, where it is first down and goal. Johnson takes the snap, pitches out right-hand side this time to Tracy Brooks. Little hesitation play, and Brooks with the hezzy move gets it in on the right-hand side, and now looking for his family who is here to see him play in Salina for the first time. And it looks like two outlaw players may be fighting each other. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. No, I was gonna say that uh, you've got two players. It, you've got uh, Dylan Donahue and it looks like Rashad Powell that were going after each other. Powell kind of came over and it looks like he's clearly going after Dylan Donahue, which Pal can do what he wants. Dylan Donahue's not the guy that I'd want to go after. He's one of the main anchors of this Billings defense. Dylan Donahue had Powell's helmet in his hand in less than a half a second after that started, and he lit it. He just ripped the helmet off of Powell right away, and then those two started to go after it. And Salina players, I love it. They're sitting there wanting to flag on the Billings guys fighting each other. <laughs> Jimmy Kozalski on for the point after as Salina has put their first touchdown of the day on the board. They have a chance to take a lead if this extra point kick is successful. Tracy Brooks will be the holder from long snapper Kelvin McCoy. The kick, a little bit of pressure there, but Kozalski true right through the center of the uprights. 3.40 left to go. Salina Liberty take a lead, courtesy and some help of a Billings penalty. 7-6 to six is our score here on KINA. Spring cleaning time, and that means you should add one more little thing to your to-do list. Call Comfort Heating and Air for an HVAC clean and check. Our technicians will make sure your system is in tip-top shape, so when warm weather arrives, your AC will be ready. That means cleaning your coils, checking freon levels, double-checking all electrical connections for safety, even changing your filters. With locations in Salina and Clay Center, we are the company that cares. Comfort Heating and Air. You can rely on the company that cares. We're Comfort Heating and Air. When you hire street plumbing, heating, and electric in Salina and Lincoln, you'll be making a great decision. Providing full-service plumbing and HVAC, they have the knowledge and skills to get the job done right the first time. They work with you throughout the project to ensure you get the personalized service you deserve from licensed and insured technicians. Excellent customer service in Central Kansas since 1985. The experienced team will clean the premises once the job is done. Street plumbing, heating, and electric. Know them better at streetphe.com. 
Are you looking for a positive environment with updated facilities to get started on your wellness journey? Then the Salina Family YMCA is the place for you. The Y offers member benefits and rewards that make it a fun and exciting place to reach your health and wellness goals. Sign up today for our Get Started program. And upon membership activation, enjoy two complimentary 30-minute sessions with any of our qualified wellness coaches. Come be a part of a strong and welcoming community and see what we stand for here at the Salina Family YMCA. The CIF champions play here. Liberty Football with Eagle Communications. Indoor football on KINA. 7-6 to six is our score. Welcome back to Tony's Pizza Event Center. Tracy Brooks has found the end zone, the league leader in touchdown runs. Nice little kind of subtle hesitation move there by Tracy. They get, got away from the first push using that hesitation move and was able to score. Then the Jimmy K extra point puts the line up 7-6, to six, and there are still a lot of interesting things <laughs> going on in the Billings bench right now. Yeah, there was a lot of back and, we'll just say back and forth uh, extracurricular activities talking about what they were going to have for dinner on the ride home. If you're going to fight a teammate, maybe do it at home, Brian. Don't do it when you have like a 16-hour bus ride ahead of you. Yeah, it's, it's going to make for a long trip back home potentially between uh, a couple of those guys. But uh, like you said, it was kind of funny to watch uh, you know, all the Salina guys just try to say, hey, throw the flag, throw the flag. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes this game fun, though. Thomas Newman back deep here for Billings. Looks like he will have with him. Looks like Jamario Benson. High end over end kink from Kozlowski. Benson will take it at the two, and he is out to the 10. Has some space at midfield, and nobody's going to catch Jamario Benson. Special teams woes oh. continue here. I think that's Josh Best. Oh, yes, it is. Thank you. Zero and eight. Could not tell on that jersey. Thank you very much, Russ. It is Josh Best. So Mr. Best has his two touchdowns already. Wow, what a return there. All the way down the field, 47 yards. Yeah, that kind of parted wide open right there. He, I, I don't think he even left the hashes until he was just had to juke Jimmy K down there, Brian. Yeah, it uh, the, the C parted. He was able to go right up, and Jimmy's not the, the quickest reaction when it comes to trying to go over and make a tackle. And I, I couldn't really tell if he was even close. Vincent Espinoza will leave the offense back out on the field. They will go for two, try to pass it to the left-hand side, and right oh. through the hands of the receiver, who then gets a courtesy hit from Dontre Matthews, looking for Joel Shaw that time, and it's incomplete. So our game stays at a five-point spread. Media timeout, 2.33 left to go. First quarter, 12 to seven. Outlaws over the Liberty. You're on KINA. Think about the word precision. Precision is being exact and accurate. Isn't that what you want when it comes to electrical? Precision Electric in Salina brings exact and accurate quality to electrical jobs in Central Kansas since 2003. Precision Electric's focus on quality and performance combined with their experience and dedication creates a winning set of finished products, which saves their customers money. Precision Electrical Contractors is looking for licensed journeyman electricians as well as apprentice electricians. Apply online at PECC. Salina.com. All right, here we go. Steve Z's Cars, Steve Z's Cars on the west side of Abilene. Yeah, Abilene Car Sales is the place that will save you lots of money. Warmer weather is here at Abilene Car Sales. Lots of sunshine means it's time to spring into the fun. Abilene Car Sales is ready to help you find that perfect vehicle for summer fun. Add a reliable truck to pull that camper or boat. Perhaps upgrade your current ride to something a little more fuel friendly. Stop by and save on Northwest 3rd or see our inventory AbileneCarsales.com and spring into fun. This is Salina Liberty Football with Eagle Communications. cleaning time and that means you should add one more little thing to your to-do list call comfort heating and air for an hvac clean and check our technicians will make sure your system is in tip-top shape so when warm weather arrives your ac will be ready that means cleaning your coils checking freon levels double checking all electrical connections for safety even changing your filters with locations in salina and clay center we are the company that cares comfort heating and air you can rely on the company that cares we're comfort heating and air 
Warmer weather is just around the corner, and we can feel it at Salina Wholesale Liquor. Now's the time to get quotes and place orders for those graduation parties, weddings, or spring break shenanigans. We always have great deals on case orders, 15% off for Wine Wednesday, and Craft Beer Thursday. Save big now at all three locations, in Salina at Sam's Club, off 9th Street behind Cadoba, and on the corner of Iron and Ohio. We have better prices. We're close and quicker. Salina Wholesale Liquor. This is Salina Liberty Football with Eagle Communications. Jeff Luke, you know, coach talked about Jeff's first game back, but he hasn't missed a beat up there playing nose tackle. And Kelvin McCoy and those front three are going to have their work cut out for him all night. And already an offensive lineman down with the injury to Joel Galvin. Here's a short kick by Billings, and it's going to be snagged really nicely by Salina Liberty as they will keep it here on Billings' side of the field. Looks like Tristan Gould taking that onside kick out of the air. Brian is, I once again ask for help with the numbers because from up here, they all look the same. Well, you were close, one off. It looked to me like it was Evan Ray, but oh. I can't read these numbers and I'm right here. <laughs> but that was an impressive catch. That was almost in danger territory. He caught that over his shoulder, running backwards like he was a receiver. And if that ball drops right there, it's a live ball. So a great job by the return team from Salina, something they're obviously probably gonna have to adjust to as this game goes on. Javante Johnson loading up the right-hand side where all the receivers are. And it is a running play to Tracy Brooks. They keep going back to that left-hand side. And boy, this Billings defense has an answer every single time on that side. And it, I know the philosophy sometimes is if you have a great speed rusher and a really physical pass rusher like a Dylan Donahue, you run right at him. But so far, he's had great backup. Yeah, and you're pairing him with Jeff Luke, like I said, up the middle. And I don't know if they're trying to stay to the left side, being the strong side now as Joel Glavin has, has went out of this game. But at some point, you're going to have to put another back in there, chip block with a wide receiver or something. Minute and a half left to go here, first quarter. Two receivers on the right-hand side in motion, and the ball goes over the head of Javante Johnson. We don't see that very often out of Kelvin McCoy. I think he got contact before the ball yeah, was even snapped, and he just snapped it to get rid of it to my kill the play. My brain wasn't working there again, and, and I, as I was saying, you know there had to be something to cause that because Kelvin is as about as true as it gets. So offsides here on Billings, who gets another five-yarder. Yeah, and guys, Tristan Gould is in the backfield. Okay. And we saw this alignment quite a bit last week in Rapid City on Sunday where Tracy Brooks will play receiver, but Tracy out of the game right now. Gould out of the backfield. Javante Johnson looking at the crossing route, and he's going to have Mo Strong at the 10. This will be a pickup of about three yards for the Liberty and bring up a third down and about a yard and a half. And that's about the third time, maybe the fourth time, Javante Johnson's had to get up off his backside. He's holding onto that ball really, really late. Offensive line's doing a great job of spreading the pocket out and leaving it open and allowing him to step up. He just kind of seems to keep floating back and back and back and doesn't want to take those two steps up into the pocket. Third down and about a yard and a half here for Salina. Football sitting just outside the nine. They need to get to the eight. And now a bad snap goes to the left. I don't know if it was a bad snap or a bad catch, oh. but there's going to be a personal foul penalty here on Dylan Donahue, I assume. Javante Johnson went to the field, covered up the fumble all the way back at midfield, and then Donahue came in and basically belly flopped on top of him. And then the flag came out. And so that, sorry, Devin, but Javante Johnson's the only quarterback that's active tonight. First so those, game this season, though, yeah. there's only been one quarterback yeah, active. Yeah, so he's got a, you know, you don't want to see them shots, but this is going to be a huge turn of events because that would have been fourth and a mile from here to Assyria. <laughs> and now you're going to get half the distance to the goal and it's going to be first down. Would have been about fourth and 18 with that miscommunication between McCoy and quarterback. So now they're going to bring it back oh, that. to the 11-yard line, but Salina will have a first down. They lost a few yards in the big picture of things, but that penalty does give Salina a first down with 28.9 seconds left here in the first quarter. 12 to 7, Billings leading by five. Salina spreading it out once again. Two to the left, one to the right. Tristan Gould stays in the backfield. The give to Gould. He works to the right-hand side and will get to the five-yard line on a gain of five. And that will be our last play of the first quarter. 12 to seven is our score. 
Billings leading over Salina, but the Liberty knocking on the door as you watch it on YouTube for CIF football right here on KINA. Salina Regionals Orthopedic and Sports Medicine is your home field advantage. Our physicians include sports medicine physician Dr. Matthew Pyle, along with orthopedic surgeons Drs. Travis Rump and Todd Riley, plus an A team. There's a career for people on a mission. There's something for people who want more than a job, for those who have purpose, for those who want to meet challenges head on. A career for those who want to serve others and protect the innocent. For those who have high standards and want to be held accountable. This uniform, this badge, is earned. Visit khbjobs.org to learn more. When does normal acute pain become abnormal chronic pain? Chronic pain can be one of two types, nociceptive and neuropathic. Each type differs based on what causes it, what it feels like, and what treatments may relieve it. Neuropathic pain can often be managed by a therapy called neurostimulation or spinal cord stimulation. If you suffer from chronic pain, ask your primary care physician for a referral to the Salina Pain Clinic. Our pain specialists will discuss the right options to manage your pain. Online at Salina Pain Clinic, Org. The CIF champions play here. Liberty Football with Eagle Communications. Go to the sports section and click on the link there. That will get you easily to the video version of this game. 12-7, Billings leading, but Salina knocking on the door. Second down from the five-yard line. They can't get a first down right before the goal line as the give on second down is to Tristan Gould. He will flirt with the two-yard line and will become third down and about two and a half yards. Boy, those first down sticks setting less than a football away from the goal line. So Salina can get a first down before the goal line, but I'm sure thinking about six here, more importantly, on third down and short. Yeah, and on third and short, running running into this defensive front is not something that is easy by any means. We saw last week up in Rapid City the run game was very successful, but you'll see what this game can do. Snap back to Javante Johnson. He goes to Gould, and Gould trying that left-hand side, and just nothing there. As again, making tackles over there for the Billings Outlaw defense is linebacker Victor Martinelli. Yeah, and I think he came from the far side defensive end. He's playing defensive end on the their left side of the ball, and he came all the way down the line of scrimmage, run parallel down to make that tackle. So that brings up yet another fourth down. Fourth down and goal. Excuse me, not goal. Fourth down and three. And a chance for a first down right before the goal line. And Coach Ron O'Neill wants to talk more about this. 13-44 left to go here in this second quarter. Just underway here in the second. Other games tonight underway. Topeka is playing Southwest Kansas Storm. Sioux City playing Rapid City. And Gillette playing Omaha. All three of these games should be underway. Gillette and Omaha, the last one to kick off about 10 minutes ago at 7 o'clock Central Time. It looks like 10 minutes left to go up in Rapid City in the first quarter. It is still 0-0, Rapid City and Sioux City. Let's see if we can find some other score updates for you here. It's kind of been a rarity that all the teams play on one given night, right? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of we've had Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday games, but they're all in action tonight in Champions Indoor Football. Big fourth down here for Salina. Johnson back to pass. Here comes the pressure, backpedaling, puts it up. Back of the end zone, Demarius Washington was open again, and that ball way high. And Dewash is a big guy. He is about six foot five, six foot six, and that ball. Way too high for him. Yeah, he needed to be about eight foot six right there. So uh, just a tough, he was open in the back of the end zone again, which under pressure, just once again, Javante just getting pushed back in the pocket, not able to step up and make a throw. So Billings will come out with their offense after the turnover on downs. 1246 left in the second quarter. The beef lead 14 to six. Wow. During the second quarter, I thought that was the last game to start so did I. tonight. Let's see if we can check in on Topeka and Dodge City. Had the video feed pulled up there in Omaha, but no scoreboard on there for me to go. I had to scroll through the comments to find it. We 
reset of the game clock here. Speaking of scoreboards, 12 to seven, Outlaws. They get the football back here with a five point lead. Two receivers in motion on the left hand side. They're gonna give it into the belly this time of running back Josh Batiste. And he is gonna be taken down for a loss. Both teams on defense really doing a nice job against the run. Yeah, that looked like that might have been Travis Taylor right there coming off the left side and just it's like almost the blocker just whiffed and that's not one guy you're gonna wanna leave unblocked. Second down and 11 now after that loss of one. Billings back to the four yard line. Espinoza still has Batiste on his right hip. Two receivers on the left hand side. Espinoza back to pass, quarterback draw it looked like, but then he raises up and throws it at the last moment. And that one's gonna be stopped at the six yard line after a gain of two and a really, really nice play by the Salina Liberty defense. Yeah, great form tackle right there. I try to read a jersey number, but once again, I'll, I'll revert back to somebody who maybe can see better eyes than me. Trevon Slayton, I'm gonna say. And that was a perfect executed tackle. Best caught it and turned around, and Slayton's right in his lap. Big third down. Third down and 10 here for Billings. They need to go to the 15 yard line to keep the chains or get the chains to move here. Three wide receivers on the left, empty backfield with one on the right. Here's Espinoza wanting to run, comes out to the 15 yard line. He has stopped short. He is gonna be about three yards shy of the sticks and that'll bring up fourth down and three for the outlaws. And you would imagine, you know, I can almost guarantee you they're gonna keep the offense on the field here as once again, we'll mention it again, no kicker on the roster. Fourth down and three, Coach Ron O'Neill asking this crowd here at Tony's Pizza Event Center to give vocal. Big play here early on in this game. 12-12 left to go here in the second quarter. Play clock ticking down. Play clock is down to seven. He's gonna, looks like Coach is gonna come in and call a timeout right here. Nope, maybe not. Oh, they reset it. Interesting. Three receivers on the left. Espinoza looks that way the whole time, completes the pass on a short gain and a first down. Salina is gonna have the stop at the 21 yard line. Some of the play clock stuff, I guess I don't, I don't understand. They reset it, set the ball. It was at 40 seconds when the play ended. It gets down to three seconds. Head coach is right over there about to call timeout in front of the White Hat's face and he resets the play clock. So nonetheless, it really Poor performance there on fourth down for Salina, giving that much cushion over on the far side. First down and 10 now for the Outlaws at the 21 yard line. Espinoza sneaks the handoff in to the guy running end around. It's Thomas Newman. Newman will take it across the half court stripe and go from 121 to the other. It's a gain of eight. Brian, any light on the play clock? situation that we've seen? No, I, I don't have anything. I did not even see which official, usually it's the white hat, but I did not see. He was the one that reset it. He did reset, okay, I, I missed his signal. I'm not sure why he would have. It appeared the ball had already been set and both teams were up and almost ready to go. Second down and two. Billings at the Salina, two, 21 yard line. Screen pass out to the left. This is Newman again and Newman getting through some space and through a couple of Salina defenders will take the football all the way to the 13 yard line. And take what the defense has given you if you're Billings, just throw them quick out, screen routes. The defensive backs for Salina are a good eight to 12 yards off the line of scrimmage. And when you can put three guys over there and have two lead blocking for you, I mean, you're gonna get seven to 10 yards every carry. 10.08 left to go, second quarter. Billings trying to add on to their five point lead. Espinoza puts two wide receivers to the right. Asks for the ball. Hands it off to Batiste and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Another good stand there. Adrian Johnson, one of the first guys in for the Liberty, but then he was backed up. Coming through there, making the tackle, Evan Ray. Yeah, and Adrian Johnson did a good job coming directly down the line of scrimmage. If he takes, if he goes upfield on that, it, it allows the running back to get up and possibly break free even farther, but a great job of coming laterally down the line of scrimmage. Second down and nine. Billings working the ball down the field. 
Three receivers to the right. Espinoza trying to scramble. He's going to take a hit as he throws, and a missed interception there through the arms of Trevon Slayton for the Liberty. That could have been a big one for this Liberty defense to get off the field, and that'll bring up third down and long. Yeah, and once again, coming into this game, I know they've converted a third down already, but nine for 30 on third down is sixth in the league, so the defense for Salina needs to stand up right here. Boy, I thought Slayton had him on there. <laughs> Hit him in every part of the hands. From the 12, third down and nine for the Outlaws. Gonna put all the receivers now in motion to the left-hand side. Pitch out that way to Batiste, and he skips Ooh. through. One defender and then is absolutely annihilated over there by Tyreek Pousset. Boy, he is, he played very physical. We saw him in Rapid City yeah. on Sunday and Coach Ron O'Neill commented about it in pregame and I don't know who got the worst of that, Batiste the running back or the wall? Yeah, he came, Tyreek came in like a missile shot out of a cannon right there to not allow him to break free and score anymore. Big fourth down here. Boy, we're saying big down a lot, I know, but these are all huge plays in the early complexion of this game. Fourth down and six. Snap back to Espinoza. Pump fit. He's going to be dropped and sacked. Coming around the corner, screaming for the quarterback sack is Adrian Johnson. And that will bring us to immediate timeout. It's a turnover on downs for the Outlaws as Adrian Johnson ends that drive for the Salina defense. And we'll step away. 7.36 left to go. Second quarter. Over 30 years, Ryan Roofing has been the area's leader in commercial roofing installation. Over 10 million square feet of Duralast roofing. Now Ryan Roofing is expanding their expertise to the residential properties to better serve you and your home. Shingles, windows, siding, and gutters. Call Ryan Roofing in Salina today for a free roof assessment and get the expert advice you need. Ryan Roofing, serving commercial businesses in the area for over 30 years and now working for you on your residential property. Spring cleaning time, a wonderful time of the year. Winter is over and hope springs eternal. You have the windows open, the birds are singing and you can't help but notice that smell, that awful smell. What is that? That is your septic system backing up into your home, making spring flowers smell, well, like shh, a friendly reminder from Salina Septic Service. If you haven't had your septic system pumped out and cleaned in the last three years, you are asking for trouble. Salina Septic Service. You better call today. This is Salina Liberty Football with Eagle Communications. More little thing to your to-do list. Call Comfort Heating and Air for an HVAC clean and check. Our technicians will make sure your system is in tip-top shape so when warm weather arrives, your AC will be ready. That means cleaning your coils, checking freon levels, double-checking all electrical connections for safety, even changing your filters. With locations in Salina and Clay Center, we are the company that cares. Comfort Heating and Air. You can rely on the company that cares. We're Comfort Heating and Air. You're listening to Liberty Football on KINA. 12 to 7 as Salina's defense, led by Adrian Johnson on fourth down, gets the stop. And now the offense comes out in decent condition here at their own 16 yard line. We'll check some CIF scores after this play. First down and 10. Liberty back out on the field. Wanting it all, going deep, down the left-hand side to Demarius Washington, and he caught the ball! Going down the wall on the left-hand side, Dewash was battling with the defensive back. Javante Johnson gave him a chance to go make his own play, and that's what Demarius Washington does best. A touchdown for Demarius Washington, 34 yards. Yeah, it, and if you're Javante, you needed that. Brian, you had a good look at that. It looked like he almost brought that down one-handed against the wall. Yeah, he had a, uh, one of the defensive backs all over him, and it was almost he caught both the defensive back and the ball at the same time. But it was good concentration, and, and really that's what this offense needs, hopefully, to gain the confidence necessary as they continue on in this contest. Extra point from Jimmy Kozowski has a chance to give the Liberty a two-point lead. Placement, Tracy Brooks has to take it off his hip a little bit as that snap was just a tad outside. That does not disrupt the rhythm of Jimmy Kozalski, who has now given Salina a two-point lead 
And here we are talking about the difference in this game. So far, it is point after touchdown conversions. Yeah, just two extra points, and Jimmy K was perfect last week. So a good pickup for Salina to have him come in and kick. A couple scores for you. Halftime, Southwest Kansas Storm and Topeka, Southwest Kansas up 27 to 18. Judging by the YouTube video in the chat, it is 15 to 14, Gillette with 414 left to go in the second quarter. Sioux City at last check, uh, just about the end of the second quarter, I believe, first quarter. It's hard to tell, but it's six nothing, dot, or uh, Sioux City over Rapid City. Scores around the CIF. We'll keep you updated as we go along here. Of course here, 14-12 Salina over Billings. Beautiful thing about that Southwest Kansas and Topeka game, somebody's gonna get their first win. <laughs> That's right. And we've seen Topeka twice already this year and it is a night and day different team from last year. So Salina had to go to overtime with them. They quarterback they got there is absolutely impressive receiving core is stacked but that all goes back to the offensive line you know allowing you time to throw the football and I think that's what's helping in that play right there here in Salina as Javante Johnson had time to lay that one up for Demarius Washington 14 to 12 and boy talk about a confidence builder I, we don't know Javante Johnson that well personally yet but you got to be struggling with your confidence after some of the throws that he has missed here. But, boy, that one's got to help you out a little bit mentally, doesn't it? Yeah, when you have, especially when you have the wide receiver core that they have here, just throw it up and let him make a play at it. 14-12. to 12. Here is Kozalski. He nails one of the front men oh. for the Billings Outlaws, and that ball in a scrum. Looks like, though, Billings will recover it as he went right after Damian Francis. It kind of glanced off Damian Francis' hip a little bit, and fell down to his side, but he was able to cover it up and recover that football. And now a short field here that will test the Liberty defense once again. Which as a defense doesn't need to be tested, <laughs> you know, down here because they got, like you said, their, their front three to four guys playing pretty well in the, the de defensive line and middle linebacker, whoever they got in there. And this secondary now is gonna have to stand up as they're right on the edge there, that 15 yard line. This is about the spot that Salina just had the ball and scored on a one-play drive. First down and 10 for Billings. Low snap, Espinosa has to pick it up. Now he's gonna throw it away to the back of the end zone. He put that one all the way up in the first row of the balcony to make sure it did not go somewhere for a turnover. So second down and 10. They just got outside of the pocket there on that one, he was being chased out, so. Here's the defensive line here, keep doing a lot of the same. See if you can get Travis Taylor, Adrian Johnson again. And obviously you got Kodak, Keenan Gibbs right up the middle, just clogging everything up. Ball sitting at the Salina 17 yard line. Three wide receivers on the left. One of them now will vacate and come to the right and early moving up front. I believe this is the left tackle for the Billings Outlaws. Yeah, Pika Leota. Large man out there at left tackle. So that'll cost the Outlaws five yards. Take them back now, second down and 15. An incomplete pass on first down, a penalty there. And now the line of scrimmage backed up to the 22. Coach O again calling on this crowd. And as we've seen here in this arena, you don't have to have all the people, you just get the right ones and boy, it can get loud That's in right. here. Espinoza, three receivers to the left. Drops back, couple of pats on that football, and then he's gonna drop it in for a four-yard gain. This time going to Jamario Benson for a four-yard gain. Third down and 11 coming up. And a much better job of not only keeping the receivers in front of you, but be there to make a play. Don't give them so much cushion that allows them to turn up field and make one or two moves and get. Yes, he did have to go to the ground and catch that, but defensive back was right there on top of him. He wouldn't have gone anywhere anyway. 4.22 left to go here in this second quarter. Salina trying to protect a two-point lead. Billings trying to convert a third down and 11. They need to get all the way to the seven-yard line to move the chains. Espinoza back to pass. Looking, still looking, ducks under one rusher. Can't get away from the second as Travis Taylor 
comes in and flushes him down. Keenan Gibbs was the first one. Espinosa was able to duck under Coda's right arm and then Travis Taylor came in from the other side. And Brian, I've talked about how good the front three for Billings has been and really haven't touched on Salina, but they've been playing great, great football. Yeah, they, they really have. You, you talked about Keenan Defense, Gibbs, Travis Taylor in there. You know, they're bringing Defense, the excitement back. Defense, and you know, Defense, this is without a Shaq Radford that's injured and in missing the last two games. Defense, so the Defense, defensive front of this Salina Liberty team continues to be an exciting team to watch. And a timeout by Billings. So I'm gonna put a lot of that credit to this crowd. 3.19 left to go. It is a timeout on the field for Billings. This is a big play for the Outlaws after that sack from Travis Taylor. They are backed all the way up to midfield at the 24 yard line. And it's a big, big down here for them. Trying to convert this fourth down. And I like what Salina did on that last play. They, they, the middle linebacker recognized to blitz, took two steps, and then saw the running back leak out of the backfield, which is where Espinosa wanted to go with that football. And as soon as he cocked back to throw it, he was right in his lap and really had nowhere to go. So I think you do a lot of the same thing here. You can leave a little cushion now because you do have that far to go, but you can't get lost in your coverage. Fourth down and 17, we'll call it. Again, Billings line of scrimmage at the 24. They need to get to the seven. Going strong to the right. Two receivers in motion. Espinoza spins the ball. Now trying to get away from a would-be tackler. Again, he's going to unleash one to the end zone, and it's broken up and knocked down by the Liberty coverage team. Right in front of Brian Burner, who got a piece of that action. And the Liberty offense will come out and have really good field position as they start out at the 24. Yeah, C.J. Jones was the one that knocked that ball away. Kind of got the wind knocked out of it at the base of that wall. These walls do not have much give to them, but it's a great play. Thank you for saying that I was involved in the play. Let the camera see me. I was backing away. <laughs> yeah, he, he was on the move, and I don't blame you down there because that thing was coming right into your lap. But a great job right there, and, and that – Great pressure, but they only rushed two on that. So the defensive backs did a great, great job. 3.09 left to go. First down and 10 for the Liberty. Great field position after the turnover on downs for the Outlaws. Starting out at midfield, Javante Johnson back to pass. Floats it out of the backfield to Tracy Brooks, and Brooks gets to the midfield stripe. Limited to a gain of one. Denarius Antoine there to make the tackle. And I think you still got to give credit to these front three. You talk about Zach Hill coming into the game to play right tackle now as Joel Glavin goes out. But Kelvin McCoy, Aleki Tapa doing a great, great job allowing Javante Johnson enough time to find the fourth option. Second down and nine. Liberty load up on the left. Johnson, little pump fake, falling back. He puts it up to the end zone and off the rigging. The steel beam coming down from the ceiling. And that ball glances off of that as I think Demarius Washington was in the area, and he was. And a flag in the offensive backfield of the Liberty. Yeah, it's got to be close. That's now two times now he's just been hammered well after. He throws the ball and turns his back and then still gets drilled in the numbers. So, I mean, he has plenty of time to throw the ball. He's holding on to it clear to the end, but... At some point, you're good. those hits are going to start to add up if you're Javante Johnson. I think Demarius Washington had a bad collision with that wall, too, because he comes up, he's holding his right hip as he very slowly walks back to the offensive huddle. But a beneficial penalty there against the Billings defense as they have a roughing the passer personal foul penalty called against them. So a first down for Salina, and the line of scrimmage now moved to the Billings 13-yard line with 219 left to go here in this second quarter. Johnson brings his offensive unit back to the line of scrimmage here at the 13-yard line. Pitch out left. Tracy Brooks has a little bit of space, spins off a first tackle, and he will get inside of the 10. Nice little carry there for Tracy Brooks of about three yards. Let's call it, yeah, about three yards. Yeah, he's still attacking that left side, but it looks like they have flipped now. Donahue is now over 
on the far side. And it looks like uh, Rashad Powell has returned from the locker room and is now out on the defensive side of the football. 135 left to go, second quarter. Second down and seven now. Liberty looking to the end zone, off the fingertips of Mo Strong. And another big pileup back here at the quarterback. Javante Johnson's down, a couple of outlaws, and a lucky Tapa also in that mix. No flag this time, though, as that ball had a vapor trail behind it and just unable to bring it in was Mo Strong in the end zone. Yeah, and it went behind Mo Strong a little bit, and I think if you lead him there a little bit, he, he probably catches that, but he was fixing to take a shot from that defensive back who read that play perfectly, but yet again, another shot. So it looks like we're gonna get the 60 minute warning, or 60 second warning. 60 second warning, gets a 60 second timeout. Back to round out the first half of action. Salina Liberty leads the Billings Outlaws 14 to 12 right here on KINA. When pests have become too much, it's time to call Hassman Termite and Pest Control. With staff having over 150 years of combined experience, we offer all services for structural pests, termites, ants, roaches, spiders, crickets, mice, and bed bugs. In our 60th year of our family serving yours, give us a call or visit us on the web at hassmantermite.com or see us on Facebook. The Tony's Pizza Event Center is open for business and ready to welcome you. Whether you have a group of 12 or 1,200, our staff can help you plan the perfect event. With eight meeting rooms and over 18,000 square feet, the Great Plains Manufacturing Convention Hall has plenty of room for your conference, trade show, wedding, or banquet, while our in-house food and beverage team can craft the menu to suit any event. Schedule your personalized tour today by calling Tony's Pizza Event Center or visit Tony'sPizzaEventCenter.com. The CIF champions play here. Liberty Football with Eagle Communications. One minute left, third down and seven for the Liberty. Fake pitch out, right-hand side, little lob pass to the goal line, and it's going to be broken up by the Billings defense. Great play there by the outlaw defenders, Damian Francis, in there with the pass breakup. Yeah, just a little bit underthrown right there. Coach is going to leave Jimmy K on the bench, and... Fourteen to twelve is our score. Fourth down, and again another fourth down that is making the <laughs> complexion of this game. Yeah, it's fourth and seven for the Liberty. Ball will come from just inside the ten-yard line. Johnson looking left the whole time. Wants to go to his target. It's going to be picked off. Stolen away by the Outlaws. It will be Roderick Jarrett. We've got flags and hats all over the field right now. Hats, helmets, <laughs> flags, all kinds of things. Jarrett went from one side of the field to the other and was brought down at about the 10-yard line by Kelvin McCoy and Tracy Brooks. And an interception, it appears, for the outlaw defense. I think these penalties are post-interception with 44 seconds left. Yeah, the head lineman threw his flag, then the umpire threw his flag, and immediately right after the next block threw his hat. So... If, if all these penalties on Billings were accepted, they'd have about 36 of them right now, and I think 20 of them came on two plays. Fourth down. Salina trying to convert it, and an interception in the end zone, it appears. There's a conversation here between Haran O'Neill and the officiating crew. And Coach O shaking his head from side to side. Not, not agreeing with what's being said right now. See if, looks like we'll get the call. Well, we thought we were gonna get it. Here we go. So oh. the first penalty coming through, Brian, was an illegal hands to the face, and then a penalty on the Salina player for participating without his helmet. Yeah, I, I thought for sure that was going to be one of the calls because you saw that the helmet got knocked off. Now, I wasn't sure how that came off, 
But then you saw the Salina player continue on in the action, which once that helmet comes off, he just kind of has to take themselves out of the play. So I guess a lucky break for Salina from the standpoint of its offsetting penalties, so they get another shot at this. Now the other thing that's important on this play also is, guys, keep in mind, Billings will get the ball to start the second half, so you don't want to give them you know, that two-for-one type opportunity right now. So was this play not post-interception then? It had to have been before. I think the hands to the face came early, yeah. So offsetting will play it again, fourth down. Johnson back to throw, open field to the right. He's going to spring out of there. Will he get to the first down sticks? He will not. He is going to be short. His helmet comes off as he was hit and spun around. And he is very, very close to that first down sticks, but he will not get there. He'll be about a football shy. That means Billings will take over at their own five-yard line with 36.9 second, seconds to go. Wow, and that, uh, a great effort right there by Javante Johnson, but, man, you go down there in that area of the field where everybody's coming down on you and you slide head first, you're kind of wide open for, for contact right there, and they'll bring the ball out to the five-yard line because barring penalty, you can't not start your own drive inside the five-yard line, so... Billings having two timeouts left here with the final 36.9 seconds. You need another big stand, like Brian said, getting the ball to start the second half. 14 to 12 is still our score. Salina has been the only team to score here in this second quarter. They did that early on. Billings trying to come from their own five yard line. Middle of the field, nothing working there. An incomplete pass will stop the clock with 34.8 seconds left. Both of these teams, by the way, have two timeouts remaining. And, and if you can hold them here, if you're Salina to incomplete passes and the, and the clock will stop, mind you, Billings doesn't have a kicker, so they're not going to try to kick it out of the way, you know, kick it over the wall and switch field here on Salina. So if you're this defense, you need a stand right here. Second down and 10 after the incomplete pass on first down. Keenan Gibbs is the nose tackle right over center. As Adrian Johnson to his right, Travis Taylor to the left. Espinosa in the end zone. Wants to run, quarterback run, and he's going to have some space out to the 11-yard line and then gives himself up there to stop the clock with 30.2 seconds left. That was a great design play right there by Espinosa, knowing that the defenders were way back. Run the, one, run the wide receiver off across the middle of the field and just a wide open out there on the outside and then smart enough to get against the wall, give himself up to stop the clock. 30 seconds left here in the second quarter. Third down and a long four, about four and a half. Billings has to get across the 15 yard line to avoid a fourth down. Three receivers on the right, Espinoza snaps the ball. Wants to screen it out now to the right hand side and it's gonna be caught and then taken down at the 21 yard line as they will move the chains here. A nice little pitch and catch to Jamario Benson in a timeout called by Billings to save some of this 23 seconds. Yeah, so that'll leave him one left. You know, right there you wonder, after you have the first down, the receiver kind of cut back and went to the middle of the field. You have the first down, just give yourself up and go to the outside of the wall to protect those timeouts. Still plenty of time left, 23.1 to go. 14 to 12 is our score. Salina leading by two. Crucial possession here in the middle of this game, as Brian said. Billings could have the opportunity here to double up if they bracket the halftime break with a score here and then start out with the ball and score to start the third quarter. Outlaws have one timeout remaining. As they come out of this one, first down and 10. Football sitting at the 21. Espinoza goes strong with his formation to the left. All three receivers, the two inside guys in motion. He'll go to the one left over that did not go in motion. That's Jamario Benson. Benson breaks off seven and then steps out of bounds with the football over the wall at the 22-yard line. 19.2 seconds left. And at some point, if you're sliding, you got to give, give a little space, but can't be giving up six, seven yards every play because then they'll just nickel and dime you right out of bounds and then get into the end zone. They preserve the timeout there by getting out of bounds over the wall, 19.2.
Seconds left. Still 22 yards for Billings here. Espinoza back to pass. Back to Benson, who's wide open. Nobody there for the Liberty defense as Benson is wide open. Caught at the 15, made his way to the 12, and then stops the clock again with the ball over the wall. Like I said at the beginning of this game, that this Billings team comes in last in the league at only averaging 75.8 yards a, pa a game passing the football. And right now they're just six to eight to 10 yard nickel and dime in this defense down, all the way down the field. 15 and a half seconds left to go. Mind you, this drive started at their own five yard line. Yes, sir. First down and 10 at the 12. Espinoza fakes the screen out to the right. Going to be chased from behind, but he gets away. As Travis Taylor was giving chase, you almost wonder if Espinoza could feel him there as he got out of bounds after an eight-yard gain. Gave himself up at the five-yard line to stop the clock with 9.8 seconds left. Yeah, he had to feel him coming down. And a great job by Vincent Espinosa to get. Then the defensive backs had an angle on him. He just took a hard left and got the ball over the wall to stop the clock here with under 10 seconds to go. 9.8 seconds. Still a timeout in the back pocket here of the Outlaws. Still can get a first down. Espinoza, little shoulder twitch, goes to the back of the end zone and it's gonna be caught for the third time tonight. He has all of the Outlaw touchdowns. It's Josh Best. Great route right there by, by Best in the back of the end zone. He was clear on the far side and just ran the wall all the way down. And this offensive line did a great job for quarterback Vincent Espinosa to stop, step up into the pocket, wait, 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 finally at the last minute, get it over. And Best with his third receiving touchdown of the night. For Espinosa, it's his second. The other one for Josh Best came on a kick return. And now the point after conversion. Going to go for two again. Try to extend this 18 to 14 lead. Running the kind of read option play, and Espinoza is going to be hit as he throws it out of bounds. Nice physical play there once again by Keenan Gibbs. And 18 to 14 remains our score with 5.6 seconds left in the second quarter. And time on the clock now for Salina maybe to get a return set up or where, barring wherever this kickoff goes off, we assume it's going to be Denarius Antoine to come out and kick this ball off. And we saw the last one get caught at about the 15-yard line and have a short field. So depending on where this kickoff goes, you still got a lot of options right now. I think if you're Billings, you want to kick this one deep to try to get this clock to start running as soon as either Kevin Simmons or Tracy Brooks catches this ball. But a, a bad way for this defense to in their half of football. So I'm coming up with a couple stands, but once again, we see the holes in the secondary, that whole drive down the field. Yeah, there are a couple of plays over there that Jamario Benson could have done six or seven cartwheels and not had anybody touch him. And just soft coverage, as you said, we'll try to get the comments of Heron O'Neill as he heads to the locker room here at the half. Still awaiting a kickoff here for the Outlaws with 5.6 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. It's a four point outlaw lead. This game's gone back and forth all night long. Billings started out with the first touchdown, went up six to nothing, then Salina answered with a point after, went, went up seven six. Outlaws came back, made it 12 to seven, but missed their PAT. Salina comes back, takes a lead 14 to 12. Latest touchdown now for the Outlaws. Nobody's had more than a one score lead. And Josh Best is now kicking off. Best will make this a short kick over to the right hand side and it hits the wall and that will make a dead ball, and the clock never should have started. Should have 5.6 seconds on it, as they will put the football, it's like maybe around the 16, 17 yard line. So a play here. Do have two timeouts left, but just not enough time probably for that. Maybe you get a quick hitter here, but 
more than likely this will probably be the last play to end the half. Fonte Johnson will put Anthony Love, Demarius Washington, two big targets over to the right. We have not seen Ed Smith since he limped off the field in the first quarter. Johnson wants to pass, goes to the right to the two big guys. In the end zone, it's up for grabs, and Demarius Washington nearly came down with the football. That thing was up for grabs and had a chance to be caught, but falls in the end zone without doing harm to the Billings Outlaw lead. The Outlaws lead it 18 to 14 here at the end of the first half. And boy, just a back and forth half there for this game that no team had more than a one possession lead. And now back and forth we go with a four point game going to the locker room here at halftime. Let's go down on the field. Coach, trail by four at halftime. Thoughts on the first half? Well, the first two touchdowns, great plays by them, but we busted covers and we made the mistakes. Um, our kicker, we supposed to squid kick that. He kicks it high, they return it for a touchdown. Um, then we had a busted cover on their first touchdown. So two, 14 of their points shouldn't be up there um, the way that they got it. Maybe they would have earned it, but we, did, we gave that to them. So we just need to play better and understand what we need to do. Um, we're definitely fighting the injury bug. Um, we got a bunch of guys beat up, so we got to figure out who's healthy and, and try to go from there. All right, best of luck, second half. All right, thank guys. You. Thank you very much, Brian. On the field with head coach Ron O'Neill, 18 to 14 as we are at halftime. We'll step away for halftime here. Salina Liberty football on KINA. And I think your keys to the second half on Salina on offense is you got to put a drive together. You really haven't put a drive together so far. You got one touchdown where you went down the field, but that second touchdown was coming off a turnover on downs and, and just a long bomb to Demarius Washington in the corner of the end zone. So I think offense, you have to put a drive together. And I think defense, you're, you've done a great job at stopping the run because that's what Billings does best. And they're last in the league in passing, and you're making Vincent Espinosa look like he's probably the best quarterback in this league. Brian Berner, coming down to you. Coach O told you on his way to the locker room he has to see who's healthy. And we saw some players kind of limp off the field. We saw some players carried off the field. We even saw quarterback Javante Johnson, after his helmet got removed on one of those plays, suffer a deep gash on him. Yeah, it's, it's going to see who can make their way through this final 30 minutes of play. It, it's been rough all the way around. Physical play really on both teams. But Billings has really done a good job of, of putting the pressure on Salina and, and just really playing a more physical style of football. It's a situation, these guys on the bench, kind of the atmosphere down here, it's just been something like you know, they're excited to be home, but yet it's not kind of the the momentum, the, the atmosphere that we've had in previous seasons down here. Hopefully at halftime, we've always said, you know, th this team is good about making those adjustments at halftime coming up. Hopefully that's going to be the same case tonight. We're going to see the defense really will have to step up. They're going to get that opportunity. Is Salina will make the kickoff to Billings here as we start quarter number three. Thank you very much, Brian Berner on the field, as we will hear from him through this second half. 18-14, Billings leading by four. They will also start out with the football as we get ready to start this third quarter of action. Again, a chance for the first time tonight for somebody to put up back-to-back -to -back touchdowns here with this opportunity Billings will have to start the second half with the ball. And you heard Coach Rick going into halftime with Brian about that kick that Josh Best returned for a touchdown. That was supposed to be a, a line drive squib kick and it, and it was up in the air and it allowed the return game to set up. So we'll see what adjustments were made by Salina on the special team side of the ball to see if they could keep Billings out of good field position to start the second half. Jimmy Kozalski has the ball on the tee, almost in the middle of the field. It's shaded to the left hash, and we are ready to go here in this third quarter. This is going to hit the turf, and then take a high bounce and come down at the 10-yard line. And good coverage there by the Salina coverage team making the stop at about the 19-yard line. That return there for Billings was held to a minimal gain. That was the return there by Thomas Newman. Much better kickoff that time. I think if you can get that nine times out of ten, you, you'll take it. First bounce real high, second bounce just past the, 
the second up guys and make a big, big bounce up in the air to create a minimal return. Now, if you're the defense up front, you got to continue to get pressure. And if you're the secondary, you just got to do better. 18-14, Billings trying to add on to their four-point lead. Salina trying to stop that from happening. Keenan Gibbs is in the middle of that defensive line. Adrian Johnson to the right, Travis Taylor to the left. Here is a pump fake. Espinoza wants it all, going down the sideline. An excellent coverage over here on the side by the Salina Liberty defensive back. Boy, just step for step that time was Evan Ray. Yeah, and I think if Evan gets his head turned around there, he might pick that one off. You know, he was running right through him. Josh Best kind of go back through him and back over it. And just a great, great job there by E-Ray to, to stay with the receiver step for step. Well, it's so nice to have him back in the mix, isn't it? Huge asset. Incomplete pass brings up second down and 10. Here's the underneath crossing route and hit at the line of scrimmage by Dontre Matthews is Thomas Newman. Newman was spun around after Matthews went face to face with him and held him to a one yard gain. That'll bring up third down and nine. And those wide receivers coming in motion to the backfield to take the handoff. Dontre Matthews reads those probably the best in this league at being able to tell who's gonna get the ball and go with the motion. So a big third down and eight here to start the second half. Third and a long eight from the 22 yard line. Three receivers on the left. Espinoza gets rid of it quickly, and it's going to be caught just out of the outstretched arms of Evan Ray. And a quick tackle over there by C.J. Jones is going to save a first down, and will be fourth down and about a football. Fourth and a yard. Yeah, they're going to mark him a full yard. Well, wait a minute. They're... He was reaching out. Yo, they... And I don't know... If they were going to give him that or not, or said he was up the wall early, but the referee over here conversing with the Billings coach on the field. They're taking the ball all the way back to the line of scrimmage almost here. Illegal defense, Salina. Brian, it's got to be some kind of a record. That's the first illegal defense of the night. Yeah, it is the first I think we've had uh, tonight. Like you said, the, uh, the call came from the back judge. So they'll go ahead and bring it back to the line of scrimmage and then mark off the penalty and repeat the down. I think they're going to get that on Travis Taylor. He might have been lined up just a little too far outside on that play. So they'll take the five yards and replay third down instead of being fourth and one. It will now be third and about three. Third and three here for Billings. That put him across midfield. They're going to try that. Well, actually fake the end around and then give it to the second man through, and it's going to be a runaway touchdown from 23 yards away. Boy, a huge hit that time on Thomas Newman, who goes down to a knee. Newman got stung on that play, but then the second handoff after the fake went to Josh Batiste, and Batiste ran away with it for 23 yards. Yeah, and that was a great play call and a great fake right there by Vincent Espinosa. Not quite sure what they, they called there, but Batiste, go ahead, Brian. I was gonna say the, the official is asking for the Salina trainers to go down. We're gonna check number zero of Billings for a potential concussion. And that would be a huge blow right there for Billings as it is Josh Best who before that touchdown had scored, had had all three scores tonight. Billings once again lining up from the two yard line to go for two points here. See if Salina can come up with a stand and once again, they've kept him out of the end zone on every two point conversion so far tonight. 10 point lead for Billings, trying to add on to that with this point after their first one of the game. Espinoza has to get away from pressure. There's a flag on the play. Billings does catch the football outside of the end zone, and now we'll have to check the flag in the middle of the field at the goal line. Got some sort of holding. One of the judges is making a holding. I wonder if it's gonna be on the offense or the defense. It's defensive holding. On so, C.J. Jones. Yeah, Billings going to get another shot at it here. That will just be a half a distance to the goal. 
So go from the two to the one, but still a chance to get the two-point conversion. That makes sense. It's a big two-point conversion here because on the CIF 10 points, you can still get 10 points after one score, so this will put it at a two-score game. From the one, strong formation to the right. Here's a snap that goes really off of Espinosa and into the running back's hands, oh. and they're going to say he gets the two-point conversion. And the crowd does not like that. Looked like he was short. The officials will review this, so coach does not have to use his challenge flag here. 24 to 14, we will step away and take a timeout during this official replay. 24 to 14, a two-pointer on the line during replay here on KINA. KINA. There's no better feeling than leaving the stadium with a win, unless you're leaving the car lot with a great deal. That's how it feels to buy a vehicle from SalinaUsedCars.com. Dozens of late model vehicles have been fully inspected and are backed by warranty. We accept cash or have financing for all credit levels. Whether you need a car, truck, SUV, crossover, or van, SalinaUsedCars.com has them all. Get the winning feeling of a great deal at one of our two locations or shop 24-7 at SalinaUsedCars.com. When pests have become too much, it's time to call Hassman Termite and Pest Control. With staff having over 150 years of combined experience, we offer all services for structural pests. Termites, ants, roaches, spiders, crickets, mice, and bed bugs. In our 60th year of our family serving yours, give us a call or visit us on the web at HassmanTermite.com or see us on Facebook. St. John's Military School Historical Museum, located on the northeast corner of 9th and Otis, preserving the 131-year history of St. John's Military School and continuing its involvement within the Salina community. Visit us at sjmshm.org. Find us on Facebook or call the office today at 785-404-2333 for more information or to book an appointment. It's spring cleaning time, and that means you should add one more little thing to your to-do list. Call Comfort Heating and Air for an HVAC clean-in check. Our technicians will make sure your system is in tip-top shape, so when warm weather arrives, your AC will be ready. That means cleaning your coils, checking freon levels, double-checking all electrical connections for safety, even changing your filters. With locations in Salina and Clay Center, we are the company that cares. Comfort Heating and Air. You can rely on the company that cares. We're Comfort Heating and Air. You're listening to Salina Liberty Football on KINA Sports. Back here at Tony's Pizza Event Center, the review by the official shows that Billings did not break the plane. So another two-point conversion left on the shelf by the Outlaws. They have four touchdowns now, Russ, and no two-point conversions to show for it. That yep. could make a difference down the stretch, but at the same time, Billings had just scored back-to-back -back scores for the first time in this game and have a 10-point lead. Yeah, they've left, what's four touchdowns? They've left at least going for two six points off the board, yeah. or eight points eight, off the yeah. board. So, you know, that's a big swing right there, and you keep it in the CIF 10 points at a one-point or one-score game. 24-14 to 14 is our score. Billings now ready to kick it off and go back to the Salina Liberty. Denarius Antoine will have the kickoff. This one's going to bounce and go high and be taken at the 25-yard line. Just into the billing side of the field. And a 34-yarder there. That was a great tackle by Andre Jackson right there coming up, it looked like, making that play. So good starting field position for Salina. First time having the ball in this second half. You've got to come out and you've got to put, about put points on the board after you know each play and this goes back right here we saw this in the second play but it looks like Billings didn't even bring their own kicking tee Jimmy Kozowski runs out to get the tee every time here's Javante Johnson middle of the field has most strong and gets away from the first tackler but then the second one comes up and closes the deal good open field tackle there by Kendall Jefferson that'll be a gain of seven bring up second down and three for the Liberty offense as they move it now to the Billings 17-yard line, maybe the 18. And take what the defense will give you. Run them underneath routes. Get Tracy Brooks maybe leaked out of the backfield a little bit. You don't have to go for that Hail Mary, you know, 
guns out play every time. Johnson back to pass, quick out again, right hand side. Goes to Mo Strong, and Strong again running through that first tackler. And Denarius Antoine will have to basically hug him to death at the 10. Yeah. Yeah, big Kelvin McCoy came in there late to try to give one big shot down the field. And I don't know, you if you see that guy bearing down on you as a wide receiver, even to come help you push, you're like, hold on, let me turn around and get a defender on you. But good start to this drive. Two plays, two positive yardage plays here, and we haven't seen that. I don't think at all this game, getting stuck at second and third and long. First down and goal at the nine for the Liberty. Coach O steps in and changes formations here. Now all three receivers on the left-hand side. Johnson, fake pitch out, wants to come to the cross on the right behind Mo Strong, but Strong makes the catch, pulls it in and gets it to the three-yard line. A heavy dose of Mo Strong here on this drive. And I think he was frustrated after that play because if it gets let out and he catches that one in stride, he's going right into the corner of the end zone. But a great start right now for Salina. You've got to go ahead and keep punching it. If you're these receivers, I, we, we understand you're visibly frustrated, but you still have to play this game. Second down and goal from the three. Two guys on the left. Lob pass to the end zone. D wash. And he's going to come down. Actually, no. That is Mo Strong again. A drive dominated by Mo Strong and a touchdown into the end zone on the corner from Javante Johnson. Yeah, three plays on that drive, three plays, a heavy dose of number 11, Mo Strong. We saw him last week have that breakout game up in Rapid City with a couple highlight catches for touchdowns. But I think if you're the coaching staff on this now and especially really everybody on this Liberty team Javante Johnson goes three for three on that drive. I think that is huge to maybe get him settled down early in this second half as you've got to play for, from come behind. Four for four on that drive. Yes. Here is Jimmy Kozalski as Coach Ron O'Neill stays true to his point after kicking philosophy. Kelvin McCoy will have the snap back to Tracy Brooks. Brooks will put it down. Kozalski's kick is up and it's good. 24-21, and now a field goal will separate these two teams as Salina is able to answer the Billings Outlaws. 8.41 left to go here in the third quarter. 24-21, Billings with a three-point lead. Lead. All right, here we go. Steve Z's cars, Steve Z's cars on the west side of Abilene. Yeah, Abilene car sales is the place that will save you lots of money. Warmer weather is here at Abilene Car Sales. Lots of sunshine means it's time to spring into the fun. Abilene Car Sales is ready to help you find that perfect vehicle for summer fun. Add a reliable truck to pull that camper or boat. Perhaps upgrade your current ride to something a little more fuel friendly. Stop by and save on Northwest 3rd or see our inventory at AbileneCarSales.com and spring into fun. It's spring cleaning time and that means you should add one more little thing to your to-do list. Call Comfort Heating and Air for an HVAC cleaning check. Our technician will make sure your system is in tip-top shape so when warm weather arrives, your AC will be ready. That means cleaning your coils, checking freon levels, double-checking all electrical connections for safety, even changing your filters. With locations in Salina and Clay Center, we are the company that cares. Comfort, heating, and air. You can rely on the company that cares. We're comfort, heating, and air. Are you looking for more than a job? Searching for a company that cares about its employees and rewards them for hard work? Street Plumbing, Heating, and Electrical is growing and looking for great people who want to work in plumbing and HVAC. With attractive benefits and competitive pay, the goal is to help you make a career out of what you do and love going to work. For more information, visit the website, streetphe.com. Street Plumbing, Heating, and Electrical, serving Central Kansas, an equal opportunity employer. You're listening to Liberty Football on KINA. 24 to 21, and Billings leading over the Salina Liberty. Here's a skip off of Kozlowski's kick. It goes into the hands of Andre Jackson, and Jackson zigzags his way out to the midfield stripe at the 25 yard line. About halfway through this third quarter. So far, these two teams both putting up touchdowns. And a three-point lead for Billings. 
Yeah, you're gonna have to come up with some sort of stop here, whether it's turnover, stop on downs. Something we saw a couple near interceptions by the secondary for Salina, but once again, the, 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 the if there is a weak spot, it's that deep secondary shot that Billings has been taking advantage of this whole game. You're just kind of waiting for that big defensive play, right? A couple of missed interceptions here for Salina, and a couple of quarterback sacks are getting good penetration, but seems like Billings has made some adjustments here and kind of going to that shorter game. Screen passes out of the backfield, little under uh, underneath handoffs and things of that nature to keep Salina off balance. Yeah, and just take what the defense will give you. We've seen that this defense for Salina has been giving a lot of, of cushion, per se, about six to 10 yards. So you're gonna come up and get four yards, quick screen pass out, get four yards every play, you'll drive right down the field. 7.49 left to go here in the third quarter. 24-21. Here's the guys in motion, one on each side. A handoff to Batiste and he is hit immediately. He will spin ahead for a gain of one yard and make it third down and five. Good action once again up front by the Liberty defenders. And that was the same play they ran for a touchdown on their last drive. You know, fake the wide receiver jet sweep, hand it off to the running back, but a much better job by the secondary of Salina staying home to bring up third and five. Ball sitting at the 20. They need to get to the 15-yard line to avoid a fourth down. It's third down and five. Three receivers on the left. Espinoza, head going back and forth, and now somehow he fits it in a small, small window that it was getting slammed shut. And the spot, of course, will go to the offense as it usually does in indoor football, and a first down at the 15-yard line for the Outlaws. And Espinoza shaking up there. He's shaking one of his hands back and forth. Yeah, he was under under heavy, heavy pressure right there and did a great job of holding on to it. Receiver come open just at the last minute. You almost thought that play was gonna was gonna bust open, but if you're Salina, you held him. Yeah, but it's still first down for Billings. 624 left to go. Billings with a new set of downs. First down and 10 at the 15. That fake underneath again. Now they're going to put it up in the air and looking towards the end zone. They wanted to go to Andre Jackson, and Jackson just a touch overthrown by Espinoza. It is incomplete. Now second down and 10. And a heavy dose of that formation of faking the jet sweep that time, going deep into the play bag and faking that. And Espinosa's running a little gingerly right now after that, that last play on that first, where they got that first down. But the receiver was open on that play, and I think if Vincent leads, leads him out just enough, he catches that in the end zone. Travis Taylor looking back and forth with Keenan Gibbs, both of them almost in a track stance, nodding their heads up and down. Espinosa has to get rid of it quickly, middle of the field. Another receiver making a great catch and then plunging ahead for a first down. Give the credit this time to Jamario Benson and the Outlaws. They will have first and goal at the five. Yeah, and once again, the secondary is just that soft spot right in the middle of that defense. Now you're going to need four straight plays here to try to keep them out of the end zone. 5.09 left to go. Here in the third quarter, get you some updates on some scores around the CIF in between quarters here, 24 to 21 here. Billings trying to add to their three-point lead. They go back to Batiste. He is fighting his way towards the goal line, gets some help from his offensive lineman and gets it into the end zone. A five-yard touchdown run for the Billings Outlaws as they go to Josh Batiste and he has both of the Outlaw touchdowns here in this third quarter. And a great job right there once again and by the offensive lineman coming in and helping him out to get him into the end zone and Salina once again unable to keep them out of the end zone. Looks like an update, Omaha Gillette, 29-29, under a minute left to go in the third quarter. Wow. I, I could be wrong on that. Just going off of what the, the chats say, we knew that game was gonna be good coming into this week. Thirty to twenty-one. Billings trying to add to their nine-point lead, going for two. And here's a snap that hits Espinosa in the knee off the turf. He has to pick it up. Now firing to the back of the end zone, and it's once again incomplete. 
five touchdowns and no extra points after touchdown to show for it. An immediate timeout. 354 left to go here in the third. It's a nine-point outlaw lead, 30 to 21 on KINA. Hey. Spring cleaning time, a wonderful time of the year. Think about the word precision. Precision is being exact and accurate. Isn't that what you want when it comes to electrical? Precision Electric in Salina brings exact and accurate quality to electrical jobs in central Kansas since 2003. Precision Electric's focus on quality and performance combined with their experience and dedication creates a winning set of finished products, which saves their customers money. Precision Electrical Contractors is looking for licensed journeyman electric Electricians, as well as apprentice electricians. Apply online at PECSalina.com. All right, here we go. Steve Z's Cars, Steve Z's Cars on the west side of Abilene. Yeah, Abilene Car Sales is the place that will save you lots of money. Warmer weather is here at Abilene Car Sales. Lots of sunshine means it's time to spring into the fun. Abilene Car Sales is ready to help you find that perfect vehicle for summer fun. Add a reliable truck to pull that camper or boat. Perhaps upgrade your current ride to something a little more fuel friendly. Stop by and save on Northwest 3rd or see our inventory AbileneCarSales.com and spring into fun. This is Salina Liberty Football with Eagle Communications. It. Neuropathic pain can often be managed by a therapy called neurostimulation or spinal cord stimulation. If you suffer from chronic pain, ask your primary care physician for a referral to the Salina Pain Clinic. Our pain specialists will discuss the right options to manage your pain online at salinapainclinic.org. You're listening to Champions Indoor Football on KINA. Let's go! 3.54 left to go here in the third quarter. 30-21. to 21. The outlaws of Billings. Nine point lead and ready to kick it off. Back deep, Tracy Brooks. Kevin Simmons in front of him. But Billings unable to get that ball deep on any of their kickoffs. It's been mostly front line guys. Yeah, and see, we'll, we'll get uh, the uh, three score updates after this kickoff. End over end, Brooks will take it. This is at the seven. Little skip move at the 15, makes it up to the 20 and to the 23. Couple score updates here. Uh, third quarter, Sioux City 24, Rapid City zero. The battle of the winless teams in Kansas, Southwest Kansas Storm in Topeka. Southwest Kansas up 36 to 24 with about 45 seconds left in that game. And the big one in Omaha at the end of three. Omaha scores right at the end of the third quarter to take a seven-point lead, 36-29 to 29 on Gillette. Wow. That one's going to go down to the wire, it appears. Good field position here for the Liberty as they trail by nine. They're at the midfield at the 24-yard line. Two guys on the left and a lot of movement up front. A flag's going to fly. Liberty might have a free play here. And Demarius Washington goes up and reels one in at the three-yard line. We'll see what the flag was. It looked like a defensive lineman came across early. Coach Ron O'Neill telling the official, I don't want that penalty. We're going to take the play, and it's Demarius Washington, courtesy of Javante Johnson, all the way down the field inside of the five-yard line. Yeah, and a great job right there. Javante Johnson knew he had a free play, so he just if you're going to throw it up, you just throw it up in the area where number one is at and let him go get the football. So first and goal for the Liberty. Hand off, Tracy Brooks, little counter play, and he runs over a Billings defender and then flexes in their face. Tracy Brooks with his second touchdown of the night, and he has brought the Salina Liberty back to within three with 3.15 left to go here in the third. And they're going to leave the offense out on the field waving off Jimmy Kozowski, but look like Roderick Jarrett right there, defensive back, meet Tracy Brooks. <laughs> And just a stone wall in the end zone that I'm going to take number two on every time. Did they say going for a three-point conversion? It's a four. Four. From the five-yard line, it is a three-point conversion. So Coach Ron O'Neill here in the third going to scrap his kicker, who has been perfect in this game, hmm. and go for a tie. Three receivers on the right-hand side. Johnson wants to go that way, oh. and that ball way too hot. Over to the intended receiver, Anthony Love, on that right-hand side, and the game remains a three-point game. 
2.33 left to go, 30 to 27. Teams continue to trade touchdowns here in the third quarter from Tony's Pizza Event Center. Boy, that Omaha. Boy, that Omaha. Gillette game. In cleaning time, and that means you should add one more little thing to your to-do list. Call Comfort Heating and Air for an HVAC clean and check. Our technicians will make sure your system is in tip-top shape, so when warm weather arrives, your AC will be ready. That means cleaning your coils, checking freon levels, double-checking all electrical connections for safety, even changing your filters. With locations in Salina and Clay Center, we are the company that cares. Comfort Heating and Air. You can rely on the company that cares. We're Comfort Heating and Air. Warmer weather is just around the corner and we can feel it at Salina Wholesale Liquor. Now's the time to get quotes and place orders for those graduation parties, weddings, or spring break shenanigans. We always have great deals on case orders, 15% off for Wine Wednesday, and Craft Beer Thursday. Save big now at all three locations, in Salina at Sam's Club, off 9th Street behind Cadoba, and on the corner of Iron and Ohio. We have better prices, we're close and quicker, Salina Wholesale Liquor. This is Salina Liberty Football with Eagle Communication. Right, and you also have Sioux City in the mix. At 3-1, and one, they came into this weekend setting in fourth place. Here's the kickoff for Kozlowski. Hits the turf hard right in front of him, and it's going to go over the return man. Look out. This could be a big play for the Liberty. Billings has to get it out of the end zone. They get to the goal line, stood up there, and then stopped. Did forward progress get the Outlaws out of the end zone? The officials say yes. And they avoid turning the football back over to Salina and yielding points. Wow. I think that's the kickoff that you're looking for from Jimmy K. That exactly did what it was supposed to do. So, of course, what you always talk about, you can't start less than the five yard line. So what a kick though. I think Kozlowski, Brian, he's putting some pop into these kicks and that one was a perfect kick there. Yeah, he's getting a little bit more on it. Just in what that does is he gets that, it's like that second bounce that goes up and that time it kind of throws the back uh, receiver for Billings. Unlucky break, though, that Salina wasn't able to get him trapped back in the corner. Thank you very much, Brian. Check your phone for me, will you? Here's two minutes left to go in the third. Here's a quarterback pass. Once it all down the right-hand side and overthrowing the intended receiver on that play, Josh Best, who already has three touchdowns in this game. He has two receiving touchdowns and also a kickoff return in the first half for a touchdown, but very good coverage that time down the long side of the field for the Liberty. Yeah, running step for step with him, and Vincent Espinosa did the right thing there. You're going to throw it to where your guy's going to get it or nobody's going to get it. He outthrew him by about 10 yards right there, so Best looks like he's going to check out of this game after that play. Three wide receivers to the right. Here is a quick out and through the hands of two different receivers and out of bounds. Boy, that ball came out hot from Vincent Espinoza. And it looked like maybe a second defender had a chance to intercept that, but I saw a fan's hands come up late. So nonetheless, it brings up here third and 10. And now is when you look for a guy like Travis Taylor. Adrian Johnson's been having a great game at that right defensive end, Keenan Gibbs. Need the secondary to step up right now early. A big third down and 10. See if Salinas defense can get off the field here and force a fourth down. Espinoza looking to the right. Pump fake. Now he wants to go long in an incidental contact between a defensive back and a wide receiver. The wide receiver for Billings is upset. It's Andre Jackson, but the two clearly both looking at the ball just kind of ran into each other. And, and Billings doesn't have to run another play here, so we'll see what they have. Let's go to the end of the third quarter. 20 seconds on the clock here. They might get one more play if they want to, but as Russ said, they can kind of coast it through to the end of the quarter and use that as a timeout if they want. Kind of looks like that's what the Outlaws are going to do, and it also give a chance for this crowd here to calm down at Tony's Pizza Event Center. Clock is going to go all the way down to zero. We are going to go to the fourth quarter. 30 to 27 is our score. Billings leading Salina. A big fourth down for the Outlaws. We come back here on KINA. Salina Regionals. 
There's a career for people on a mission. There's something for people who want more than a job, for those who have purpose, for those who want to meet challenges head on. A career for those who want to serve others and protect the innocent. For those who have high standards and want to be held accountable. This uniform, this badge is earned. Visit khpjobs.org to learn more. When does normal acute pain become abnormal chronic pain? Chronic pain can be one of two types, nociceptive and neuropathic. Each type differs based on what causes it, what it feels like, and what treatments may relieve it. Neuropathic pain can often be managed by a therapy called neurostimulation or spinal cord stimulation. If you suffer from chronic pain, ask your primary care physician for a referral to the Salina Pain Clinic. Our pain specialists will discuss the right options to manage your pain. Online at Salina Pain Clinic, Org. The CIF champions play here. Liberty Football with Eagle Communications. 30-27, a three-point lead for the Billings Outlaws, and they are sitting right now with a fourth down and 10 at their own five-yard line. You need one more stand right here. This drive's been so far stalled out. Much better job by the secondary from Salina. You, you just can't get caught sleeping. We've seen Billings and Espinosa come up with plays running wide receivers, jet sweeps, fake jet sweeps that have just kind of went every which direction. So you got to be real disciplined and stay home here. In these situations before, especially at the end of the second quarter, when Billings was driving to get a score, they took the soft spot of the field, right? They took the defensive back that was playing off and relied on the pitch and catch and the run after catch. They have some talent on the outside. Let's see what Billings can do here. So far, Vincent Espinoza in this game has been pretty good on his conversions. He'll need to have one here. From their own five yard line, fourth down and 10. Two receivers on the right, one on the left. Josh Batiste in the backfield. Espinoza wants to throw, looking to the right, puts one into the VIP area and overthrows his receiver and a turnover on downs. Salina is going to get the football at the five yard line with a very very short field yeah and of all plays to get a defensive stand and of all spots on the field you couldn't have stepped up any bigger in that situation and if vincent espinosa had plenty of time to throw the football there i don't know if he was expecting best to come back to that football but best was streaking down the sideline and just a miscommunication right there play clock was running down they had about three seconds left when they went in motion so a good job here to see if Salina can punch this in. 30 to 27 our score. Salina down by three. They have a short field at the five yard line. They will hand it off and get nothing on a first down run. Tristan Gould on that carry. And the front three for Billings, and Donahue and Luke and Rashad Powell up there have just been playing phenomenal all night long. Two receivers in motion to the end zone right in the middle of the field and just a train wreck there, Brian, of guys, just bodies everywhere in the middle of that field, a lot of congestion. Yeah, you had three defensive backs for Billings and then Dewash and Anthony Love kind of crossing each other and that ball was just kind of thrown. So line of fortunate that that ball didn't get intercepted. 30 to 27. Salina did throw an interception in the first half, but that was waved off via penalty. So no turnovers so far tonight for the Liberty. Big third down, third and goal from the five. Tristan Gould in the backfield. He will block a lob play to the back of the end zone and this is gonna be a holding call on Billings. Brian, that was right in front of you though. Was that ball catchable? The flag did come down. I, I don't think it was catchable, but it looked like while the ball was in the air, you had hands going up to the face of the Salina receiver. Okay. Then either that or prior to the pass, maybe before it was even thrown. They're gonna call pass interference on the defense. That'll be a half a distance to the goal penalty and a first down here for the Liberty. So they again, Get a penalty there that is going to help them 
keep this drive going from the two and a half now. It is first and goal. Here's the handoff and the touchdown. Tristan Gould. Donahue came in and hit Javante Johnson late. Yeah, he doesn't even have the ball. The referee is sitting there staring at it. J Johnson takes his helmet off. Ron O'Neill is in that scrum between official and quarterback. He is not happy. But Tristan Gould gets his first touchdown of the night and the Liberty take a lead. Oh, there's another punch being thrown. There was a clear punch thrown by Jeff Luke, it looked like right there. But yeah, when you hand the ball off like that, Devin, the quarterback's just standing there running back, not even doing anything, and then just completely gets 360 and thrown down. But Jeff Luke right there definitely did throw a punch. Clear as day. Looks like he went after Demarius Washington there, Brian. I'll let you sort this out. It's going on in front of you. Yeah, it looked like it was Detray Matthews who okay. got the uh, shot to the face. So we're going to let the officials sort this out and see. So they're going to call offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties against Jeff Luke and also Dontre Matthews. So each that will be basically put in the notes and noted. If you get another one, you're going to get ejected. But right now, it's just basically a slap on the wrist and nothing happens. So once again, a lot going on on that play. Mind you, don't get lost. Tristan Gould did get in for that touchdown. And it looks like the offense is staying out on the field here. And it appears to be, well, they haven't spotted the ball yet, so I'm not sure. Well, and honestly, I mean, once you make that commitment to get out of the, the, the kicking game, you're almost stuck with this now, aren't you? I mean, you, you, yeah. it could be 34 to 30 right now. You could put up another extra point here, make a 35 to 30, but now you're trying to get points back. Yeah, I think that's exactly, you've, you've almost committed to it. You're exactly right. I didn't think of it that way, but yeah, they went away from it. So, and well, now, Well, take all that back because now Jimmy Kozowski's coming out for the yeah. extra point. I mean, <laughs> you're not threatened by Billings trying to field goal to win, to you know tie this game if the no. game goes all the way down with no scores because we're obviously going to have more with 12.49 left. But I think you go with Jimmy K or get that four-point spread. It's just a nice spread for you if you can get this kick here. And Kelvin McCoy is the center. Tracy Brooks will receive and hold for Jimmy Kozowski. Trying to make this a four-point Liberty lead. I and think this play is going to be whistled dead. I think you're going to have a false start and maybe another fight. Well, the, the trouble is you've got the same two players going right back at it again, it looked like. Sure do. That was one of those, um, this fire's not quite smoldered out yet. Let's just go ahead and put a little fluid on it. Yeah, I think that fire is going to burn for another 12 minutes and 29 seconds. False start on Salina. So they will back up five yards and try it again. Shouldn't be a problem, though, for Kozlowski. His leg is pretty good and pretty accurate. I was say last week the only kick he did miss was that kick from about midfield. 34-yard field Yeah, goal. that did get over the wall. So plant leg almost right on a logo here, though we know how tricky those can be. We'll back him up to the 16. It'll be a 24-yard attempt. And Tracy Brooks gets ran into by a Liberty blocker and a Liberty rush man. But Kozowski misses the extra point. So our score stays 33-30 to with 12-12 left to go as the Liberty are able to take the lead here. Unfortunate right there, unable to, to uh, get that extra point. Still at 33-30, and obviously it's still going to need to be a... Over 30 years, Ryan Roofing has been the area's leader in commercial roofing installation. Over 10 million square feet of Duralast roofing. Now Ryan Roofing is expanding their expertise to the residential properties to better serve you and your home. Shingles, windows, siding, and gutters. Call Ryan Roofing in Salina today for a free roof assessment and get the expert advice you need. Ryan Roofing, serving commercial businesses in the area for over 30 years 
and now working for you on your residential property. Spring cleaning time! A wonderful time of the year. Winter is over and hope springs eternal. You have the windows open. The birds are singing and you can't help but notice that smell! That awful smell! What is that? That is your septic system backing up into your home, making spring flowers smell, well, like a friendly reminder from Salina Septic Service. If you haven't had your septic system ah, comes in now and they're trying to beat the Mustangs. Yeah, and then the last update is Sioux City playing in Rapid City. 13 minutes left to go in that game. Sioux City comfortable 30-6. to six. Okay. Here it is 33-30. to 30. Still a lot of work to do here for the Liberty. 12-12 left to go, but as we look around the corner, the next home game on Saturday, next week on April 15th, is the Omaha Beef. A rematch of the last two seasons championship game. One of those won by Omaha, one of those most recently in 22, won by the Salina Liberty. Here is Kozowski's kick. This one's going down the middle of the field, and again, a tricky bounce that kind of hangs in the air, and it's going to be taken by Josh Best. He already has a kickoff return for a touchdown, and he will take this one out to the 21 or 22-yard line where the Outlaws will have it there. Brian, what has happened here with the inability to move the ball for the Outlaws and then the Liberty coming in and getting a touchdown. A little momentum here by this Liberty defense, what do you say? Yeah, just totally different atmosphere down here in the bench area. A lot more excitement. And after a couple of those penalties, I think some guys have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. So it's going to be fun to watch this defensive stance right now. 33 to 30. First down here for the Outlaws. They're at their own 22-yard line. Vincent Espinoza will have Josh Best out to the left-hand side. He has been a big receiver in this game. He'll go away from him, though, and go to Batiste. A big spin move there by Batiste, and he is able to get some positive yards. So they go away from one Josh and go to the other, away from Best to Batiste. And he is able to get almost six yards on first down. Across the midfield stripe now, second down and five. Yeah, well, it might have been C.J. Jones coming flying up to make that tackle, and Batiste spun out of it. A great job right there. Would have been about a two-yard game, but Batiste able to spin out, get back to the middle of the field. Second down. From the 23-yard line, here comes a man in motion. They fake that handoff of the underneath route. They go to Batiste. He is stymied by the first guy and then taken down by the second guy. Evan Ray was the first Liberty defender there. Third down and two. Ball sitting now at the 20-yard line as Billings goes into Liberty territory. And a great job once again of reading that misdirection as best came through the backfield on that jet sweep and they give it right up the middle. But a great job right there. See if this front three for Salina can stand up and hold once again as they're gonna go back under center. 10 and a half minutes left to go. Still a ton of time, third down and two. A guy on each side in motion. Batiste stood up in the backfield. It's Adrian Johnson. Johnson there almost directly following the handoff as he was able to make a tackle in the backfield. And that's going to lose about a half a yard there for Billings. Now faced again with another fourth. And, and Batiste might have saved him about two yards right there because he was tackled two yards behind and kind of lunged forward and reached the ball out. So a great job right there. Now to see once again as it's fourth down and we've seen Billings struggle in fourth down in this game. Fourth and two. Billings on the Liberty side of the field. Trying to convert another fourth down. Slow snap back to Espinoza. Puts a lollipop up and it's knocked away. Nearly intercepted, but a play that was beautifully defended by Trayvon Slayton, I believe. And he almost did it right there. He saw Detray Matthews coming over. It's almost like he tried to tip it to him to get the interception. Nonetheless, I think you want the ball to fall right there because you're getting it back at the 20-yard line. So a great, great job right there by that defensive front and the defensive backs for Salina. Boy, just kind of talking with Coach Ron O'Neill, I know that he was kind of critiqued.
Carolina Medical Aesthetics has a special invite for you. A spring open house not only will help spring a good time, but will also spring lots of good prices on your favorite products. Put it in your planner Tuesday, April 25th from 5.30 till 7.30. Event only specials, exclusive drawings, drinks, and hors d'oeuvres. This is also a chance for you to learn more about the growing menu of SME's products and services. The Salina Medical Aesthetics Spring Open House. Follow SME on social media for more information. This is Salina Liberty Football with Eagle Communications. Facebook or call the office today at 785-404-2333 for more information or to book an appointment. It's spring cleaning time, and that means you should add one more little thing to your to-do list. Call Comfort Heating and Air for an HVAC clean and check. Our technicians will make sure your system is in tip-top shape, so when warm weather arrives, your AC will be ready. That means cleaning your coils, checking freon levels, double-checking all electrical connections for safety, even changing your filters. With locations in Salina and Clay Center, we are the company that cares. Comfort Heating and Air. You can rely on the company that cares. We're Comfort Heating and Air. You're listening to Salina Liberty Football on KINA Sports. 33-30, Salina leading by three. Javante Johnson in the offense back out onto the field. Johnson, quick little route right there, setting down. It goes right through the hands of Anthony Love. Yeah, and seen that a few times up in Topeka a few weeks ago. Obviously, Anthony Love didn't make the trip last week, but you got to come down with that. That one did come in hot, but if you're Jav Javante Johnson, you need your receivers to come come down with that. He's been struggling throwing the ball in this game. Been a lot better in the second half, but you got to see that one go into your hands. Nine minutes left to go. Second down and 10 coming up here for the Liberty. They will dispatch two wide receivers to each side. The guys in the slot in motion. Johnson backpedaling, three-step drop, and then under pressure, Puts the football right at the feet of Mo Strong. Two incomplete passes, now third down and 10. Yeah, and that one he really didn't have much time at all. It looked like he didn't even have the handle on. He kind of bobbled the snap a little bit and uh, unable to corral that and get it down the field is well underthrown. So now you're faced with third down and long. Third and 10. Salina from their own 20. They have a three-point lead, but obviously that's not very comfortable right now. Here's Johnson down the field, wide open, D. Washington at the 15-yard line. Would have the first down by five yards, and it's incomplete. Yeah, just, just flat missed him right there, and D. Wash obviously visibly frustrated once again, but go back, and if you're Javante Johnson, you, you you had a receiver drop it. Yeah, you got it there, but you got to get it there every time or at least allow them a chance to make a play on it. Fourth down again. We've had so many fourth downs in this game. Fourth and 10 now for the Liberty from their own 20-yard line. They're at risk of giving the ball right back to Billings here. Empty backfield, four wide receivers. Johnson steps up. He's going to be hit and dropped right at the line of scrimmage. He did get back to the line, it looked like, but give the stop there to Dylan Donahue, making the stop and a fourth down and a turnover on downs. Yeah, just a great job right there by this Billings defense, and Dylan Donahue did a phenomenal job on that play. Now, it, it, if you're Salina, you're, you're calling on your defense once again to make another stand right here and putting this defense it, up, backs up against the wall once again as Billings will start in Salina territory at their own 20-yard line. Yeah, and Billings is going to take over here. Great field position, as you said. Short field in front of them at the 20-yard line. And a chance to kind of resume where they just turned the ball over on downs. 7.19 left to go. Vincent Espinoza, empty backfield, drops it off to the left-hand side. And that is complete. Will go for about nine yards. 
had a lot of soft coverage on this side, a lot tighter on the far side of the field, but just taking what they're giving you. And like I said, going back to what worked for them in the first half. Second short now, they just need to get to the 10 yard line for a new set of downs. It is second and one from the 11. Batiste in the backfield with Espinosa this time. Two receivers on the right in motion. They'll sneak it into the belly of Batiste and he will run to the right and then have a big collision with Dontre Matthews after he gets the first down. It's a gain of four. And that was a big, big collision over there. Yeah, it looked like maybe Travis Taylor kind of caught the brunt of that as well. 120 left in Omaha, 52 to 29 Omaha over Gillette. Beef are putting it on, aren't they? 6-11 left to go here. Billings with a new set of downs. They are first down and goal from the seven. Two guys on the left in motion. Espinoza wants to go to the end zone. Throws a lob pass and it goes over two Liberty defenders and out of bounds over the back wall. And that will bring up second and goal from the seven yard line with 5.49 left to play. And it looks like Espinosa is going out of this game. Yeah, he has been holding around his hip area a lot. And he's coming out. And it looks like maybe uh, Jamario Benson now is overtaking calls in from the coach on the offensive side of the ball. Interesting. Benson will take the snap. Coming from the seven yard line, second down and goal. Play clock expired. Yeah, it did. And Billings took way too much time getting that play off and the play clock does expire and that will cost Billings five yards and back him up to the 12. Still second down and goal from the 12 now. Clock continues to melt down, 5.13 left to play. Now push back to the 12, still goal to go, so second down in what would be 12. Now it looks like Billings gonna burn a timeout. They will, it's their first timeout. Five minutes left to go and a 30 second timeout. We will keep it right here. So. Southwest Kansas Storm, Brian, they get their first win. It looks like Omaha might remain undefeated. And Sioux City moving to 4-1 and one in the action around the CIF. Makes this a big game. Need to stay even and just be one game behind Omaha as that would set up a very tough time next Saturday night. Omaha coming in here, Tony's Pizza Event Center to play the Salina Liberty. Always a fun game with Omaha, that's for sure. Always. You only see them one time in the regular season this year. Yeah, they come here, we are not invited there. It's unfortunate, I like going up there. Two guys in motion on the left. Benson looking that way, wants to pass. Now he's gonna squirt out and try to make it to the end zone. He is gonna be taken up against the wall at the three yard line, where it'll be third down and goal. Boy, you wonder if some mistake was made there with the Liberty defense because obviously Jamario Benson is a runner. Yeah, yeah, and he he had all, yeah, I mean, he went through all his progressions and that right side of that field just opened wide open and no contact made till inside the five yard line. Third down and goal from the three. Benson remains. Batiste in the backfield with him. Three wide receivers on the left. Benson looking that way, under pressure. Now he's gonna run again and try to get to the goal line. He reaches towards the stripe and he's gonna be down shy of the goal line at the one yard line. Fourth and goal at the one coming up. And a spirited conversation there with Heron O'Neill and Travis Taylor at the tackle spot. And I think they're gonna either review this or challenge it, one of the two. 3.55 left to go here in this game. 33 to 30 is our score. I don't think he was in. I think that was, he had the ball out there, but his hip and his, really the upper leg between the knee and the hip was down. Yeah, so 
Well, the whole whole offensive, everybody coming over to get this play call from the head coach right here. You need a big stop, it is fourth down, so huge stand right here for Salina. Tricky thing for Salina on defense is diagnosing this play, right? Now you have a guy that can play receiver and running back and they're taking snaps at quarterback because Vincent Espinoza went out of the game. Jamario Benson asking for the snap. Quarterback keeper trying to look for daylight. Not he stood up and dropped by the Predator. Dontre Matthews comes in, goes helmet to helmet, and knocks him down at the two-yard line. What a play by Dietre. And, and Brian, I'm going to send this down to you. Is there anybody you want coming up to make that play other than the Predator? No, I mean, that was a great read by Dontre to be able to see you've got a mobile quarterback and from this angle, and I'm at the far side, it did look like that was going to open up in the middle. And then next thing you know, you look up, and here comes Dontre right at you to make that tackle. So that was an outstanding defensive stance. And Billings had wanted to challenge that last play. And the officials, we notified the officials there were some issues. And they went, hey, replay's not available. And so that took that option away from, away from the uh, the outlaws. So Salina now with their lead, putting their offense on the field. It's a three-point advantage, and Tracy Brooks back in the game. We saw Tristan Gould get the last score, but now the former MVP from just two years ago back in there for the Liberty, and Tracy will go to the right-hand side and knock off a couple of yards there, and now a late flag comes in here by and the I think, lead official. And I think they're going to get unsportsmanlike on the coach. He ran right down when that play was still going on, wanting a flag on something. Going to oh. be a sideline warning, yeah. So, again, it's kind of like the offsetting unsportsmanlikes earlier. You get a little slap on the wrist, and we play on. Yeah. Tracy actually got three yards out of that play, they're going to say. So the ball comes out to the eight-yard line, second down and seven. You know, I think take what the defense has given you, a lot of cushion on that far side of the field. All three receivers on that side of the field. On the left, here's Mo Strong. They complete it to him, puts his head down. Now he's going to go to the 13-yard line. Kelvin McCoy, the center for Salina, carried his block all the way out to the midfield line at the 25. He wanted to take care of his business. Yeah, and we've seen that multiple times from Kelvin McCoy. You want to talk about a guy who go till the whistle blows. He had a guy 20 yards down the field, so but a great job right there setting up that screenplay to Mo Strong, and now that brings up third and manageable, very manageable right here for Salina. Third down and two. Clock continues to melt down as we work our way towards the 60-second warning. 2.09 left to go. Third down and two here for Salina. Loaded up on the right-hand side. Fake pitch out. Johnson leaves it off for Brooks. A little one-on-one -on -one play out here in the open, and Tracy's going to have the first down. A big play there. They almost cleared out the field with those three receivers and then ran TB2 underneath for that little screen play. Yeah, and Tracy's so good at knowing where the sticks are on that play. He, he caught it, knew he had to get one yard, got the one yard, and then got over to the side where he got tackled against the wall. So a great job right there, as it looks like now we might have a timeout by Billings. Billings will take the second of their three timeouts. They will have one remaining and also a clock stoppage at the 60-second warning. So more than likely right here is it's just a 30-second timeout. You're going to get one play right here, and you're going, do you burn it on this side of the 60-second of the warning, or do you burn it on the other side of the 60-second warning? So, yeah, they got one stop left for them, and then the 60-second, like you said. But if you're Salina, you can't go away. You still have to – you've got to keep this clock running. you Got to get the ball down the field. You've got to get positive yardage. 33 to 30, 140 left to play. Salina leading by three. They have a new set of downs with the screen play from Javante Johnson to Tracy Brooks. And the offense will come out here with the line of scrimmage at their own 19 yard line. Here's the snap to Johnson. Bobbled the snap just a little bit out of the shotgun and then gave the late handoff to Tracy Brooks who will get two yards. That'll get that clock going once again. See if Billings wants to stop it. It doesn't look like they do. It'll be second down in about seven. 
It can, it can run into the 60 second warning here. I think you just, as Coach O'Neill still has Javante Johnson over there, that's probably what you're gonna have. Coach O just calmly folds his arms and we're gonna coast it to the 60 second warning. 60 second warning gets a 60 second timeout. We're back with more Liberty football and a chance to wrap this one up. When we come back, Liberty lead it by three on KINA. Steezy's cars on the west side of Abilene, yeah! Abilene Car Sales is the place that will save you lots of money. Warmer weather is here at Abilene Car Sales. Lots of sunshine means it's time to spring into the fun. Abilene Car cleaning time and that means you should add one more little thing to your to-do list call comfort heating and air for an hvac clean and check our technicians will make sure your system is in tip-top shape so when warm weather arrives your ac will be ready that means cleaning your coils checking freon levels double checking all electrical connections for safety even changing your filters with locations in salina and clay center we are the company that cares comfort heating and air you can rely on the company that cares we're comfort heating and air Warmer weather is just around the corner and we can feel it at Salina Wholesale Liquor. Now's the time to get quotes and place orders for those graduation parties, weddings, or spring break shenanigans. We always have great deals on case orders, 15% off for Wine Wednesday and Craft Beer Thursday. Save big now at all three locations, in Salina at Sam's Club, off 9th Street behind Cadoba, and on the corner of Iron and Ohio. We have better prices, we're close and quicker, Salina Wholesale Liquor. This is Salina Liberty Football with Eagle Communication. That is with back-to-back -back losses and a below 500 record at two and three. Long time out here with the 60 second warning. Players back now ready to go. As the Liberty in an offensive huddle. Coast, head coach Ron O'Neill on the field for offense and defense for the Liberty. And a chance to talk to his offensive unit here. Just one timeout for the Billings Outlaws to utilize. Spread formation with no running back hmm. here for Salina. Javante Johnson will have it, and it looks like this one's going to be blown dead. Maybe Dylan Donahue offsides, or really got a great jump, one of the two. And it is offsides against Billings. So the second down and eight turns into a second down and three now for Salina. That got 10 second runoff. Oh, I know they now said, they reset it back to a minute. They said penalty was on 5-0. Yes, it was on Dylan Donahue. That was close to being offsides on the receiver right there as well. Kind of stutter stepped at the last minute. Second down now. The ball going across the midfield stripe. Salina into Billings territory at the 24, but right now it's all about the clock. Salina has a three-point lead. They're trying to kill the clock. Give to Tracy Brooks. He was grabbed in the backfield, but then got away and is able to get it to a first down and move the sticks. It's just kind of old reliable, right, Brian? I mean, Tracy Brooks is here just kind of hanging out all day, and then all of a sudden you say, well, we need you, and here he is. They put 56 seconds back. The clock operator actually started prior to the snap. But yeah, as you mentioned, Tracy Brooks, as reliable as they come, Fortunate situation there, though, was that he was run into the boards, and that stopped the game clock. So Billing still has that one last timeout. Still sitting on that one timeout, though, a new set of downs here for Salina. First down and 10 at the Billings 21 yard line. Back to Brooks, counter place, steps out of the hole, and he's going to have six yards. And Tracy pops up with a motion and stares towards the Salina Liberty bench. That will get the clock running here. Yeah, and Billings but, waving the white flag, I believe, here, don't you, Russ? Yeah, they're not calling a timeout right there. So, I mean, you can let this play clock run down to almost the whole thing run down to about 10 seconds left to go. So, yeah, I think you're right. And Coach O'Neill right here might just let it run down and then call a timeout with 10 seconds left. Salina still has three timeouts at their disposal, so he can take this one down. There is a bout. A 10 second difference between play and game clock. He's going to take a timeout with 
one second left on the play clock. That will leave 11 seconds left on the game clock. So interesting call there by Billing not to take that timeout. Yeah, you're exactly right. Basically just uh, uh, waving the white flag, like you said, and you know, gotta get positive yards here if you're Salina for the clock continue to run. I can't imagine, you know, if you run a play here and maybe stop them on, I, I guess I, I just don't know. I don't know why you don't burn that timeout unless you just are, are finished. 43 seconds off the clock. Yeah. About. Second down and four. This will be a big win for Salina, especially returning home, restoring some of the energy in this building. They've been on the road for a month. Javante Johnson now go to Tracy Brooks once again. Tracy again starts out one way, turns back the other, and he will have the first down, and that will do it unless Billings wants to use that last time out. The official conversating with the Billings coach on the field right now, and he says, I'm good, and that's going to be it. 33-30, to 30, our score. We await the arrival of head coach Haran O'Neal in postgame. When we come back, it's all brought to you by our friends at Ryan Roofing. After a big Salina Liberty victory, 33-30, to 30, our score. Salina moves to 4-1. and one. We'll talk more about it when we come back here on KINA. For over 30 years, Ryan Roofing has been the area's leader in commercial roofing installation. Over 10 million square feet of Duralast roofing. Now, Ryan Roofing is expanding their expertise to the residential properties to better serve you and your home. Shingles, windows, siding, and gutters. Call Ryan Roofing in Salina today for a free roof assessment and get the expert advice you need. Ryan Roofing, serving commercial businesses in the area for over 30 years and now working for you on your residential property. 